need to flash that beard around here, buddy. All right. Uh, he's in Arizona, by the way. That's hot for a beard like that. Nikki, how you doing, gorgeous? R&R, uh, &R, good to have you back. Terry Brown, thanks for coming on in. The lovely Jenny is back. Video game player, how you doing? A long time, no time. As we uh, scroll on down, and Space Cow, how are you, brother? Good to see you, my fellow Canadian. All right, keep it going. There's Bob, Sensational Sherry, Logan, Bealzebrad, how are you? I followed you back on Instagram, bud. And Harvey, nice to see you. We're going to get going here in 20 seconds, everyone. Hey, Super YJ, how you doing? Remember, the Super Chat is a great way to support what we do on a nightly basis here on Spaced Out Radio. Of course, if you're brand new, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell. All the veterans out there tuning us in, we absolutely love you here. Thank you so much for joining us. Get your horns up, people. It is time, once again, to rock out to Bumblefoot. Hey, hey, hey. From the mountains of central British Columbia to you listening around the world, this, my friends, is Spaced Out Radio. I am your host, Dave Scott, sitting in the captain's chair of SOR headquarters. We welcome you to tonight's show on our terrestrial affiliates around North America, digitally on TalkStream Live, Revolution Radio, and KPNL. All of our archives are free by going to youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio do old Davey the favor hit that subscribe button you can follow us on twitter at spaced out radio and on instagram spaced out radio show our website is spaced out radio.com we have a plethora of features for you including rocking out the bumblefoot and reading up on captain shirk's sor newswire tonight's show is brought to you by chive charities Help make the world 10% happier by visiting Chive Charities today. You can find them on our website. Yes, the Butch, the Butch, the Butch is back. After missing last month due to some health concerns because he had to get a, his teeth scraped or something. I'm not sure. Maybe he had a little bit too much plaque or gout flare-up, I don't know. But the main thing is, Butch Wikowski and Strange Days returns tonight on the Mighty SOR. Former police officer Butch now spends his retirement hanging out with the legends and monsters of Pennsylvania. Yep, he even drops his pen every now and again when he's getting ready for a show, but that's okay. We still like him around here. Butch has been doing this for well over 20 years, and the one thing that he knows for sure is he has no answers yet. Butch Wachowski, welcome back to Strange Days on Spaced Out Radio. Pleasure, my friend. Pleasure. What's new? What was it last month? Because you, you played hooky last month. Um, I'm having some work done on my uh, lower teeth, and... Being that I'm a bleeder, uh, they have to take some, whatever it would take you one day is going to take me like five or six times. And uh, they're, uh, they're, 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 when they were doing something, there was a little crack in the jaw, which they had to fix. So it'll continue. Starts tomorrow again. Yeah, I hear you, man. I hear you. You know, I went to the doctors yesterday and it takes a lot for me to go to the doctor, but my eye has been sore. Like my eye socket, you know, and, and like the doctor's like, w what did you do? And I said, I don't know. I said, you know, it's one thing like if you're playing hockey and you take a punch to the eye, you, you have a result. You know what I'm saying? You know what caused it? You, you already know that it's going to probably go black a little bit and maybe uh, bloodshot eyes for a little bit, but that's okay. You live with that. But uh, uh, my eye has been sore. So anyways... I go into the into the emergency room because I don't know what's going on. My doctor's closed. And in Canada, we could just do that. By the way, my bill was zero. And going on with that, they take my blood pressure. And old Davey is at 150 over 102. That's not good. That's no. not good at all. <laughs> not, not at all. That's, no. 120 over 80, buddy. That's what you strive for. That's what I'm normally around. And, and all of a sudden, I'm at 150 over 102. So the nurse says to me, as she's taking my my uh, uh, my blood pressure, she's like, so uh, why is your blood pressure so high? I said, I don't know. I work 16 hours a day. Uh, 
uh, I'm fat, you know, I, I have a terrible diet, I have no motivation to do anything right now, and it just seems like I don't get enough sleep. She goes, let's see, no sleep, uh, fat, uh, apparently I, I'm, I'm not healthy right now. So today I had to make some changes because I, I, I don't want to go through what you went through, Butch, a couple mm. of years ago, you know, because that would really suck. It would really, yes. really suck. You know, that then, then you, you know, you're going to bed at like 730 every night and, you know, you end up watching Matlock all the time and Golden Girls and I just don't want to do that. So I started making some changes today. Uh, I've eliminated my iced tea. I've eliminated lemonade you know, that I would get. And for the next long while, I am drinking water. Flush my system out. Oh, it's so good and tasty. Mmm. Mmm, water. <laughs> and I am, uh, I changed my diet. Going to be on a chicken diet here for a while. And my lunch, I had I had blueberry yogurt and, a, and an apple. You know, I, I mean, this is stuff I need to do. Because uh, it actually scared me a little bit, man. It literally scared me a little bit. So uh, I had to make some changes. Well, I knew it was coming. I mean, it, I, there were some telltale signs a couple of years ago, but, you know, just a blockhead, just like, that nah, it'll go away. Yeah, it did. <laughs> it sure did. Well, I was actually thinking about you in the hospital, thinking, my God, you know, like, you know, this is what happened to Butch. And I was like, I can't have that happen to me. I, I'm way too young and pretty yet. The only thing that bothers me or that sets me, puts me down a little bit is heat. If I'm out in the sun, whether, you know, mowing the lawn or just nutsing around out in the, out in the uh, shed or something, I, I can't stay out long. 15, 20 minutes max and I got to get out of that sun. Yeah, but I'm like that anyways. I mean, you know. Not a coal. I had, you know, I had no problem with the cold last year or the year before. I mean, it, that doesn't seem to bother me, but the heat can't handle it. No, see, Just we're up here right now. We're in perfect temperature right now. We are in perfect temperature right now. We are too. We're we're in the we're in the mid seventies, low seventies, uh, and it's been uh, nice. It's supposed to rain tonight and tomorrow, but other than that, I got the grass cut tonight, so I'm happy. Well, it, it's a, it, we're getting into single digits here in the Celsius range overnight now. And it is so great. You know, you open up that window, you get that fresh, cool breeze, like cold breeze coming in that just keeps the pillows cold all night long. I like that. Yeah, we, uh, at night we're down around in the 50s, Mark, you know, 50, 55. Haven't gone, uh, well, a couple times last week we were in the 40s, but... It, it's basically in the 50s, 60s overnight, and then uh, daytime, 70, 75, 78. And I can live with that. Well, let's move on here, man. How, how's the monsters going? How, how's the monster hunting? Well, UFOs uh, have really come up in reports in the last two and a half weeks, three weeks. Uh, a lot of... Uh, Sighting, zigzagging, uh, craft, uh, one triangle, uh, multi-witness, which is good, always good. And uh, that they just came out of the blue because, like I said before, uh, a month before last, the um, we haven't been getting much in the UFO line, and now we did. Now another thing popped up last week, and and another one this week, apparitions. Really? Yeah. And that, to, to me, that's really bizarre because, you know, I'm not, I really am not a paranormal guy. Everything I've learned paranormal, I've learned from Lon Strickler, you know. So, it, you know, he bit me uh, with that stuff. And, you know, it just, it just comes to me. But a guy called, uh, actually sent me an email, one of my phone number. I gave him my phone number and he called me right away. And he lives up in northern Pennsylvania, way north. Uh, not a big property, a couple acres, but uh, back, sitting on his back porch like he pretty much does every day, rain, snow, or shine. You know, it doesn't matter to him. And he said there was a little mist above the ground, which he said is pretty much normal up there. And um, he said they just saw this soldier. What he described as, you know, he could see the green uniform. He could see the, the belt. He could see the... Uh, 
the weapon, which was an M16, the old style hat, uh, helmet. Um, he said definitely World War II or probably Vietnam era due to the, the, the type of rifle he was carrying. And he said he couldn't make out a face. And he said just it just walked out of the mist. And, you know, he said it went maybe five, six yards and then just disappeared. And I said, wow. And he said, yeah, but that ain't all. I went, oh, okay. He said, you know, he walked down and looked around. He didn't see anything, no footprints or anything, and nothing in the grass. And that was all moist and everything. And next thing he said, he went back, sat down, got his pipe out. And he was loading his pipe. And he looked up. There's like five more people walking up through out of the mist. He said, now, they weren't in uniform. He said, but he said, I could make out faces, but I couldn't make out the clothing. He said, but he said, just kind of look like people in street clothes. But he said they were walking in a straight line. I said, are you near a cemetery or anything? He went like, no, no cemeteries around here. He said, but he said they were so lifelike. He said, you know, I could make out arms, fingers, you know, belt buckles, you know, the same thing with the military guy. And apparitions to me have always been kind of strange because in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, down the battlefield, apparitions are seen all the time. I mean, they're seen standing by cannons on horseback, uh, columns marching through the woods, and they've been they've been videoed very well. I mean, you know, it's, it is what it is. But this guy's up in the middle of nowhere, and I, I started searching around to see if I could come up with anything, and I came up with nothing in that area at all. No, nothing of any type, paranormal, UFOs, Bigfoot creature, and nothing. It just wild. And then um, a few days after that, now this would have been western Pennsylvania up near Erie. A guy was getting his boat out of the water for the season. And he said it got on to dark. And he saw somebody walking up, up you know, up uh, through the row of boats where they, I guess they park them for the winter time, take them out. And he started yelling to him. He thought it was the yard manager. And there was no answer. So then he kind of walked this, whatever it was, walked between a couple boats. So he walked over thinking it was this uh, the yard manager. And he went back there and he said he could see this person walking away. And he was calling to it, calling his name. And it turned around and just gone. Looked right at him and gone. Now, that's strange. To get two apparitions in a short period of time like that, that's kind of bizarre to me. But the guy said he, he could tell what they were wearing. He said they were clear as a bell. And he said, it's not like they came out of the mist. Because he said the mist was only a couple inches above the ground. He said and that was mostly dew. And <clears throat> there it was. And he wants an explanation. I don't have an explanation for that. Uh, no more than I have an explanation for the stuff down in Gettysburg. I mean, you know. People are driving around, uh, and, you know, and it gets dark, and they got their camera, and there's a guy that walks out behind a cannon or stands aside of a cannon. What is it? I don't know. I have no idea. But when I started looking up apparitions, those sightings are all over the place. I mean, up in the Northeast, up in Massachusetts, Connecticut, upstate New York, Florida, uh, Texas, California, it's crazy. And um, I got a hold of a researcher up in Maine who, I guess that's his forte, apparitions, and uh, works by himself. And he said, look, he said, you know, he said, I live near the water. And he said, we've had a lot of shipwrecks over the years. And he says, more than once, I've, you know, I've seen, you know, people come out of the water and then just gone. And I said, do you have any idea what they are? He said, I have no idea. No idea. But that's the apparition. And I, I you know, I've, I've heard of heard stories and read reports where, you know, people have a dog die and, uh, or pass on and, uh, uh, the day that the dog crossed the bridge, you know, they're sitting home whining and carrying on and they'll look up and the dog walks through the room. I mean, 
I, I don't know if that's a mental thing or, you know, people say there's no underworld. There's no such thing as ghosts. I'm not saying there's such a thing as ghosts, but I think there could be unsettled souls. You know, people that didn't want to leave or don't even know they left. The, it, that's that's a whole new thing there. The day my the dog, day my Zero, dog died, Zero died, I had, um, I went to bed after the show and literally I saw her shadow lying on her bed. She was a little chihuahua dachshund. So I, I literally said, Zero, not even cluing in, Zero, move over felt her move over as I crawled into bed and then realized that as she disappeared, like the weight just disappeared. But the funny part about it was just a couple of minutes after that, we've had a couple of cats pass away since we moved here. They were elderly cats. And uh, I feel one of the cats jump up onto the bed and walk across my legs. And, mm. I'm, and I'm like, you got to be kidding me right now. You got to be kidding. You know? Yeah, I... I and there's no answer for that. I mean, you talk to people that say they're experts in that field, but they don't have an answer either. I mean, no more than anybody has an answer for UFOs or anything else that's marching around. But it's it's um, when you when I really started looking back, I mean, those those cases are a lot more common than I ever would have thought they were. I mean, Gettysburg, yeah. I mean, those those reports have been going on from probably the day after the battle. But uh, th this guy, he said, look, he said, I'm telling you, he said, if I could have seen his face, he was playing and, you know, just as close to me. He said, I could have talked to him, but there was no face. He had hands, legs, everything else, uniform. And which he said was definitely Vietnam era because it was all green. And so there was color. There was color to this apparition. And that's another thing that, I've only seen one report on that in, in, in that was in um, Gettysburg, uh, where one of the homes down there was converted to a hospital where they were operating on the wounded. And uh, the guy on video, he just set up his video cameras watching it, you know, for a few hours overnight. And a, what he presumed was a doctor came out and he could see a blouse uh, with the sleeves rolled up. And it was a dark color, so he was assuming it was a union officer or a union doctor. But it, he, he could definitely see the, the apron, the white apron, which was all covered in red blood. And I went like, whoa. So I saw that video. And that, that's a little spooky. I bet. And, you know, but, uh, you know, people passing away and then, you know, somebody takes a picture of the family reunion or something like that. And there's Granny who passed away 30 years ago. She's in the picture. So I, I just think it's, I, I, you know, for lack of anything better in my mind, it, I, I just think it's unsettled souls. Or they don't know that they're not there anymore. Do you think that a lot of these this paranormal activity that we're starting to see has anything to do with, you know, Halloween being just over a month away? No. Mm -mm. No. Because I, I, it, it goes year-round. Uh, there's reports like that all the time. Uh, of things that were seen that shouldn't be there or, uh, you know, just the oddball stuff. I'm not talking about the TV stuff that pops up all the time with noises and knocks on doors and stuff like that. These are apparitions. These are the people see what they see and they describe it. And it's just like the guy said, if he would have had a face, he said, I could have talked to him. But there was no face. Everything else was there, but no face. And then the five that come up the road or you know, up the road toward his house in line, same thing. He said, but I could see the faces, but they didn't get that close where they just kind of went away. They were there and then they weren't. What do you so now, he sits out, now he sits out there with a camera every night. What do you think Good causes luck. that residual energy? I don't know. Some people say it's... Uh, the mind longs for the lost one, whether it's an animal or a human, um, or things that happened in their past, a bad accident or, you know, war. Uh, I, it's, there's just so many things 
that you could attribute to what people see or what they want to see. And that, that was an interesting little thing I found where a, a, a psychiatrist was saying, you know, if people sit and they were really close to somebody like a parent or, or, or grandparents or a friend who left. Uh, and, you know, they'll just think on it, think on it, think on it. Pretty soon, you know, they're carrying on a conversation. The person is in the room with them. Not that it's there, but their mind makes it so. And that's, that's kind of interesting. Because, look, we know so little about our own minds, it's crazy. I mean, you know, people see stuff. Uh, there's been pictures taken of accident scenes where there's a fatality. and You have uh, uh, the shape of a spirit of the person that was killed rising from either the gurney that the body's on or from the car. What's that? You know, how did that happen? Uh, and the people that go out and try to find that stuff, you know, try to, you know, hang around cemeteries and see what they can conjure up. Basically, they don't see anything. It's always, it's always somebody that's usually by themselves, like you with your dog and the cat. Now, I, I mean, I have, we ha always have two dogs once we lost one last December and the one we have now is 19 years old. And um, he's on borrowed time. You know, he's blind, he's deaf, but he gets around, he eats, he does what he's supposed to do, raises hell, barks, carries on, just like a dachshund would. But um, uh, when we uh, buried one of our, or, or had one of our uh, dachshunds uh, die on us, like the day he died, and the next day, uh, I was so used to calling the guys for their breakfast, you know, I, I called, you know, I said Moose and Harley, and and Harley was gone, but I heard two sets of feet run through the kitchen. Don't know. It's It gets beyond. I mean, you can come up with so many different scenarios, but I just think the mind, the, the, the mind makes it happen. It's just like people see stuff, they don't see stuff. Um... Or what they see, wasn't it? Look, look, look how many people report Bigfoot. It's a tree. It's moss hanging off a tree. It's a it's a deer. But in their mind, it's Bigfoot. And they'll swear and declare it's Bigfoot. But when you talk to somebody that has seen something like that, you know, a Bigfoot, you can tell they're telling the truth because they're scared to death while they're telling you. They're not, they're not you know, making light of it. Like, oh, uh, well, I think he was like seven foot tall, maybe, or like, they're, they're pretty much right on with their descriptions. And, uh, you know, when you ask them, well, what was the first thing that came to your mind? Well, the first thing that came to everybody's mind when they saw one was run. You know, wasn't like anybody was going to go up and say like, well, I'm going to go up and shake hands with it. No, everybody says the same thing, run. It's easy, though, easy, though. To, to talk about, you know, cryptids that way butch it's it's very easy to get confused in the forest when you don't know as we got about a minute to go here but with spirits especially those that we recognize could it be that you know they're just comfortable with where they are and that's the reason why they're hanging out yeah could be very seldom i i, I don't think i've well, not even seldom i don't think i've ever reported read a report on an apparition that attacked anybody I mean, it's usually somebody that was near and dear to somebody's heart. And, you know, it was always a friendly thing or, you know, something that was like expected. Like, you know, the, in the one report, a guy's brother passed away and they were twins. And they were both up in age and the one passed away. And he said uh, the day of the funeral, he sat down at the table to have supper. And he set a place out, a place setting for his uh, deceased brother. And he spent two hours talking to him. And he said he was there. He said he didn't need anything, but he was there. And on that note, we're going to take our first break here at the bottom of the hour. Butch Witkowski, Strange Days, Spirits, Ghosts, Paranormal, Supernatural, and a fine glass of water. Butch Witkowski returns right after this on Space Out Radio. All right, there we go. We is clear. 
Hey, Dutch, you're Dutch, by the way. Little Tommy Whitmore, right there. Little Tommy Whitmore, everybody. Sinister Vax, how are you? Uh, who else is here? Oh, there we go. Ozzy Steve, what's going on? Water. Yay. What are you drinking there, Butch? What's your poison? Uh, diet tea. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah. Should just be water. There's no difference. <laughs> mm hmm. How much time we got there, Chief? We got about four and a half minutes. Oh, okay. Go tinkle if you have to. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Tea runs through me like hot knife through butter. Yep. I'm already through half a glass of water and we're only 30 minutes in. How lovely is that? Going to be pissing all night tonight. All right. <laughs> Jim Nicholas, good to see you. My Zoe Buttercup has the cutest smile. And, uh,. I actually, I, uh, I don't mind drinking water. Uh, I, I don't mind yogurt, blueberry yogurt either. I have a soft spot for blueberry and strawberry yogurt. Look at this crap by Robert Two Crows. Apparitions eat breakfast for dinner. I hope you stub your toe, Robert. S Truth Gaming, what's going on? Yeah, Dave ain't eating tuna. I'll eat some celery sticks and carrots, though. I can't think of a name. What's going on? Welcome back. That's it, Tom? That's all we get? Is, is we get you for like three minutes, if that? Heartbroken here, Tom. Heartbroken. Gorgeous Marie, what's happening? Uh, I don't like, I'm allergic to aspartame, so I don't drink anything diet. I know it's 1130 there, Tom. I just want to bug you, buddy. Miss you, man. I'll call you soon. Four sixteen. what's happening? Fap, it's working. That's all I'm going to say. It's working. Both work, Tom. The gorgeous Marie makes me want to sing. Uh, let's go here. Uh, no, I'll just cut sugar off. That's easy enough. Are you on the square? Are you on the level? Are you ready to stand right here, right now, before your Devo? That you're on the square, that you're on the level, that you're ready to stand right here, right now, right here, right now. There you go, Square Hammer. That's for you, buddy. The gorgeous and stunning Alicia Carey Wyatt. All the way from Texas. Look at that. we. You know what? We can we can change uh, Butch Butch into remember Warren's cherry pie. He's my Butchy pie. Cool drink of water. I don't know. I got it right there. I'm done, man. You sure that's water in that glass? That is water. Okay. That is water. All right, we got uh, 27 seconds. 
Big thank you to Fabster, Blue Book, Dirt Road Times 2, Mennonite Abe, Tim, Smithy, and Black Dragon for the amazing Super Chats. Yeah, thank you to all the veterans tuning on in, in our chat room, hanging on out. You always got a safe home here with us. And of course, all of our regulars, including Square Hammer, hanging on out, being one with us. Here we go, guys. Second half hour of Spaced Out Radio is underway. My name is Dave Scott. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. We really do appreciate earning your listening ears. Want to remind you that if you're missing portions of this show or others, check out our free archives by going to youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. Our website is spacedoutradio.com where we have a plethora of features for you, including rocking out to Bumblefoot and reading up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire. Follow us on Twitter, at Spaced Out Radio, and on Instagram, Spaced Out Radio Show. Big shout out to Mr. Ron Bumblefoot Thal, our great music master, does all of our themes, including Little Brother is Watching for Me and Women Rule the World for Lynn Wallington on the weekends. And I'll tell you, he had a birthday yesterday, so big happy birthday to Mr. Ron Bumblefoot Thal. Not going to ask his age because, you know, rock stars have no age. They're just legends right through. Butch Witkowski's Strange Days continues tonight with Butch Witkowski from UF4Cop.com. And Butch, right before the break, we were talking apparitions. Uh, I want to continue down the paranormal road, but first, I would like to ask you about any new dogman sightings or bipedal canine. Uh, Only one, and that I think is kind of a repeat because... The area is, uh, it's within our research area, but um, just the way it was presented, it it seems to me that the guy copied off of one of our reports, early reports of two years ago. That really? was, that was really? the only one. No. But they'll, they'll start coming out because, you know, it seems like, you know, in, around October, late September, October, November, when people are out walking around, you know, in the woods, viewing the colors of the leaves and stuff like that is when we get them. Okay. So, so how did you know this guy was copying your previous reports? Uh, because some of the statements he made were my statements. Oh, that'll do it every time. Every time. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't get ugly about anything like that. I just say, okay, well, I, I got it all taken down. If I find anything, I'll get back to you, and that'll be that. You know, so he hasn't called back, so I'm assuming that he probably figured out that I figured him out. That doesn't happen very often, but it has happened a couple times over the years where somebody copies a report. Are they doing it for attention or, yes. or are they doing it because maybe they had a bad experience? No, it's fame, fortune and glory, fame and glory. You know, that's they want they want to be recognized. Uh, it's like, uh, you know, I, I was got involved with another group investigating a um, abduction in in the Harrisburg, Pennsylvania area. And, you know, when we walked into the house, I knew exactly what I was getting into. A uh, lady lived alone. She was up in age. Um, every book on the shelf had to do with abduction. Every book. Um, she was quoting stuff that apparently happened to her that I could have walked over and picked up the book and said, yeah, well, it's right here on page 396, you know. Uh, and it was just attention, you know. Uh, people get lonely, people get want attention. And then there's people that, you know, they have a legitimate something that they just don't know how to deal with and, and they want somebody to tell it to and, uh, you know, try to get an answer. And some of the stuff is really legit. You know, they, they, they've done something or seen something and, 
you know, you just you just got to, you know, tell them what you can. Uh, you don't want to lead them astray. Uh, I've never had to call anybody a liar ever. I mean, even though I knew they were lying, but, you know, you just kind of bow your way out of it. But these apparitions, that's, I think that's legit because there's just too many of them. And just like yours, you, you know, your, your, your instance where, you know, with the dog and the cat and there have been so many things like that. Like, you know, when I called the boys for their breakfast and, you know, I heard two sets of clicky clacks through the kitchen and only one was there. So I don't know. I, it's that that's, that stuff is really beyond me. And I really haven't talked to or met anybody that had any answers with it. So I just think it's a lot has to do with how you felt about the individual or uh, how close you were to the individual. Uh, were, was it were they really close to you? Whether it was an animal or or a uh, a human. I don't know. And then there's some people who just can't. Uh, come to terms with, you know, a family member dying or, or an animal and they'll carry that for the rest of their life. And if they want to see that animal or that, that person, they'll see it. I always, no doubt I always find it a little creepy butch when people keep their animals ashes. Why is that? I don't know. Just creeps me out. I mean, I have nothing against it. If it makes people feel better, great. Just creeps me out. Well, what's the difference between that and keeping ashes of a parent? Creeps me out. Not going to lie. Well, then I guess I shouldn't tell you that we're uh, about three foot away from here, all nine of our pets. No wonder you're haunted. <laughs> uh, Although I can say this, you know, Butch, we're all going to have a day when our time comes. And if you decide to get cremated, I'd take a little Butch Spice put it in the office here as long as it <laughs> as long as it included your goatee that's all that, that matters to me I'll, I'll i'll put that in the will make sure appreciate you get something. that appreciate that you know but uh, moving on here with in regards to the bipedal canine uh there was a question in the chat room about whether or not you think this creature may hibernate during winter uh that's very possible because when it really gets cold and snowy and stuff we don't really get anything. And then kind of when the weather breaks, uh, we'll get reports. And before the cold weather sets in, we get reports. But that's the same thing we found with, with Bigfoot reports in Pennsylvania where, um, you know, they're seen in the summertime, they're seen in the spring, they're seen in the fall. And then in the wintertime, they're just, there's just no reports. So I don't know. I would think then, they're more migratory. Um, there's been a lot of theories on that, um, you know, that they they move on. But the, 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 the one that we've been looking after, we've only ever seen, you know, there's only ever been one reported. We've never had a pair reported or a group. And... It, they just don't stray out of that research area we have. I mean, it's it's all the the, the largest um, forest that we have, and we're talking about like twenty six thousand acres. One's forty seven thousand acres, and it's very thick, very heavy. Um, not a lot of people even get into that area. Excuse me, <clears throat> but it's um. I don't know. I and wherever wherever we have the reports, one of the things that has always stuck with us, and we're gonna that that's gonna be picking up shortly, is where where these reports came in. There's there's always water nearby, yeah, whether it's a creek or a lake or whatever. But the other thing that's always nearby are caves. And uh, Pennsylvania's got what 500 or 600 
Uh, some are private. You can't get into them. Others are you know, open to the public, but they give you all kind of warnings. And there's actually um, uh, a spelunker group here in Pennsylvania actually um, put everything in a, a file, uh, all the different caves, their locations, uh, if they're private or if they're open. And then, you know, some that are flooded, and they'll, they'll tell you, you know, how far back they go or if they were explored or not. And um, a long time ago, uh, one guy said, they're not going to be out in the ground walking around. He said, they're going to be in a cave somewhere. And uh, yeah, that's possible. Just seems that wherever we had the sighting within mile and a half, two miles, there's a cave. Or they're seen and they're gone. And then people say, well, they're interdimensional. Well, you could say that, I guess, but we've had reports of them, you know, along the roadside eating, eating deer, deer kill. So if it's interdimensional, why would it need to eat? Changing topics here. Uh, there was a recent video out of Loch Ness recently where people with a drone claim that they have uh, found uh, the Loch Ness monster really close to shore. Uh, while during a, a a bunch of people canoeing who were sitting on shore, just kind of hanging out. Did you get a chance yeah. to see that? Yes, I did. Yeah. Now, already it's being called a CGI hoax. Wondering what you, what your thoughts are. Uh, well, uh, I, I, I think that's pretty what, what it's been nailed down to, a CGI hoax. Um, it's those... Uh, those ones that are from a few years back or a number of years back where you can see something moving in the water. Uh, this was, I don't know. At first shot, I thought it was a sturgeon. <laughs> That's just me. Uh, but, there, you know, the, the, the people that are looking for these underwater creatures, I guess you want to call them, That's, that takes a lot of expense. I mean, you know, we've got a lot of expense tied up in equipment. But the stuff they're using, like, you know, scan scanning under underwater scan radar and and all that kind of stuff i mean you're talking big bucks i mean there's uh there's one group uh well actually they're over in russia at one lake in russia they've been gone i mean they're using a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar piece of equipment to scan this lake floor now they found all kind of stuff like sunken vessels you know junk people threw in over the years uh, a couple cannons from some war, that kind of stuff. But I mean, I don't know. And there's so many mon lake monsters now. I mean, Nessie was the only one. Now we got all kinds. We got even got one here in Pennsylvania, uh, which everybody said is a log floating around. And when you look at it, it's a log. You can see the log, you can see the branches, <laughs> and it's in a man-made lake where they, you know, they drowned the whole town and a whole forest. But, but it's got I, a sea monster. Know, there's a lot of unknowns out there. Right. Right. Look, there's some really good at gifting for Bigfoot. Then there's other people who have been doing it for years and never had anything happen. You know, nothing. But they keep at it. Uh, stories of the wounded Bigfoots being taken out of uh, forest fires by the military. And, I mean, you got these people that swear and declare it happened, you know. And I'm like, you know, did it happen? Yeah, probably. Can they prove it? Not likely. Damn, I don't know. Damn. It's, it's, uh, there's so many things going on right now. I mean, like I said, the UFO sightings, like we didn't have any for a few weeks, well, over a month. And then it was like, boom, 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 one after the other. You know, every other day there was one. And with the exception of one out of four, they were all multi-witness. And they weren't even close to each other. They don't know each other. Uh, they're, and, and one uh, thing, they, they're miles apart. It's... Um, and they are what they are. We don't know what they are. Uh, you know, everybody said, well, the government came clean. Eh, the government told you what they wanted to. 
you know, uh, and they're not going to tell you everything. You know, if you think if people sit around and think that the the government's going to tell them they have something locked up out in Roswell or someplace else, you know, in Ohio, that's not going to happen. Don't hold your breath. You're I mean, not, you're not a big fan of the, fan of the of the um, sea monsters, now, are you? Uh, well. Don't get me wrong. There were, I mean, giant squid back in, you know, the 1600s that to, to everybody that was ever involved in either an attack or seeing one, that was a sea monster. And then they said, well, they never existed. Well, somebody's down exploring on the ocean floor a couple of miles down. And what do they see go across the front of the screen? A giant squid, you know, um, there, there are researchers, uh, uh, from the Oceanographic Institute that, you know, say that Megalodon still exists. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And and uh, then there's people that say, well, you know, it's it's probably a big nurse shark or something like that or this, that, you know, and the guy's going like, no, 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 no. We're talking about something that's like 60 feet long, <laughs> you know. And I'm like, 60 foot of shark? Give me a break, buddy. I'd walk on the water. They'd have to chase me. But... Uh, yeah, there are so many unknowns, and, you know, a lot of people just don't realize that. They think, well, this is the way it is, you know, this is what they said. No, uh, a lot of times that people are saying what it is, they have no idea what it is. You know, they're just, it's not that they're blowing smoke, and I'm sure there's a portion of them that are for the fortune and glory, want their own TV show, but there's just stuff out there, Dave, we can't explain. We have no idea. I mean... The, the, how many times now have we had bipedals walk out on people, more than one person, you know, a group of persons. And um, it, it, when everybody's giving you the exact same description, they're seeing the same thing. Now, if they would have said, oh, it was uh, five foot two and it had blonde hair and wore glasses and blah, 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 you know, I mean, they're like, wow. But every report that we have, Every report that no differentiating from anything, every report of description of this creature is identical, right down to his toenails. I mean, they're just everything is the same. There's nothing different. So are we dealing with something we don't know? Sure. A lot of people say, well, it's probably a Wendango. Well, Wendangos aren't exactly that description. You know, they're they're totally different. Then they'll say, well, it could be a dog man. Well, the dog man thing, nobody's ever proved that. Uh, and the dog man is like different colors and has a long tail, bushy ears, you know, uh, the snout like a German shepherd, uh, walks on all fours, never sits up. You know, that's not our guy. Our guy isn't like that. I mean, that, 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 that description doesn't even come close to what this thing is. And we've had it given to us by hunters, uh, you know, uh, general public, uh, park rangers, uh, game commission, um, property owners. And when you look at the, our like and loop, which is our research area, you know, you're looking at an area 80 miles by 150 miles. And the guy down here at the bottom doesn't know the guy up at the top. And he's describing the exact same thing this guy is. Now, there may be time between. And it's funny how all when you look at the map. And there's I have one up in the, in the library. When you, when you look at the big map and you and you see that, you know, where this one was, and this one was. And people say, well, how are they getting there? Well, this. State game land is attached to this federal land, which is attached to this state game land. So it's just like a walk from one to the other. They don't have to. If they cross a highway, it's not even a highway. It's a road. We've had that. We've had that here in Berks County. Uh, a gentleman took uh, was t- he works up the street here from where I live, and he was taking um, a bank deposit to drop off for his boss on his way home, and. I, I'm familiar with the road because I lived in that particular area of town when I grew up. And he said he went around this bend and he said this thing just ran out of the woods, ran across the road and jumped over uh, the guardrails and into the woods. And I said, describe it. And he described it. 
And I went, wow. Now, from where I'm sitting to where that happened, as the crow flies, probably six mile. But it's still within our like and loop. And we have a huge, uh, right from where I'm sitting, that we have a huge, uh, it's called French Creek State Park. A huge park, a huge state park. I mean, it's just huge. <laughs> it, it borders three counties. And from there to where he saw that take place, that, that uh, run out across the road on him, you know, it was maybe five mile, four mile. And it's all woods. You just walk out of the woods, run across the road, and walk right back into the woods. So they're out there. We don't know what they are. Um, I've tried to think of everything it could be, but I don't have an answer. I got a but question the thing, for you. The thing that keeps me tagged to it and will always keep me tagged to it is the fact that everybody reported the same thing. And I found the same description back in the uh, 1700s in Erie, Pennsylvania. And I've talked about this before on the show where uh, a guy shot at one that was messing around with his goats or sheep. I forget what it was. And he goes back in the town to the town constable and gives him the description of what he saw. And if I took that description and held that up here and held up one that I got a couple months ago, they're identical. Size, shape, two legs, massive chest, long arms, hands, hock legs like a dog from the knees down. Large wolf head. Same thing. Yellow, glowing yellow eyes. The whole nine yards. Everything. Where with the dog men, you have glowing yellow eyes, glowing red eyes, blue eyes, green eyes, and you know, whatever the eye de jour is. But these guys, it's always glowing yellow eyes, day or night. So, is there something out there? If I had to stake your reputation on it? I'd say yes. All right. I got a question for you, Butch, because a lot of times when it comes to people seeing these creatures, you and I could be standing right side by side with each other and have two completely different sightings of the same creature. How do you think that happens as we got about 90 seconds to go? Uh, well, you know, uh, I have, I've had multiple sightings of the creature where, uh, there were three couples, uh, and, um, they, did, they were all questioned separately, not together, and they all described the same thing, right down to the down to the legs. I mean, it was right on the money. Um, where I see a lot of what you're describing happen is something that's in the woods that's moving through the woods. You know, one guy said, "Oh, that was a bear," and the next guy said, "Oh no, that was Bigfoot." I could tell. You know, uh, that happens, but I don't think. It happens as much as you would think it would, uh, especially with multi witness sightings. The same thing with UFOs. Multi witness sightings are the best. Um, single sighting here uh, and 30 miles away, another sighting, same thing, identical description, color, whatever. This, it was there. It's it's when I always call them me too isms where somebody's describing something and you get you had somebody in the crowd going like, yeah, me too. I saw that. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you did. But, and uh, I'll tell you another thing with when they see these things, they're very, very touchy about, they don't want to talk to the newspapers. They don't want to talk to anybody on radio or anything like that. They just want somebody to come out and talk to them and be done with it. And I've only ever had one person call back. Uh, and that was a park ranger and said, did I get any more reports in that area? I said, no, I did not. All right, Butch, All right, I'm going to get you to hold on right there because we are going to go to break here at the top of the hour. Butch Witkowski's Strange Days continues on Spaced Out Radio as we talk everything, ghosts, paranormal, UFOs, dogman, bipedal canines, Bigfoot. We'll even find out what kind of scented deodorant Butch wears on a daily basis. UF4Cop.com is his website. We'll be right back with Strange Days of Butch Wachowski here on the Mighty SOR next. (laughs) 
I'm not going to lie, Butch. My dog farted something bad in here. It's terrible. <laughs> uh, uh, just for your knowledge, I do wear Lily of the Alley. Very nice. Yes. Very nice. And, uh, all right, Cousin Gary. Cousin Gary with his question up next. Gary's 62 years old or 60 years old, and his mustache is 58. He's had that sucker since he was two years old, that lip blade. It's impressive. Scott Taylor, Lazarus Project. How you guys doing? Super Duke, Cappy, what's happening? Peppa H, good to see you. Jurassic Joey. Water, love it. UFO Jeremy Meek, what's happening? Gorgeous Larry, what's happening? If you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, ring that bell. Hey, Butch, I'm going to get you uh, to turn your speakers down a little bit. I'm getting a lot of feedback on my end, man, that last half hour, if you don't mind. How's that? So far, so good. Okay. Let's see here. We've got about uh, two minutes here, Butch. Okay. Maybe three. I haven't decided yet. Excuse me. Who's messaged me on signal? Sharnaughton, what's happening, Sharnaughton? The lovely and talented Sharnaughton. Good morning, Tony D. What's happening to you? How you doing? Uh, Big Bad Jason with a nice, healthy little super chat right there. Just like, hey, Dave, appreciate you. There you go. And I'm like saying thank you, Jason, for that awesome super chat. Really do appreciate you supporting SOR like that. Rich Hilke's here, everyone. The Rich Hilke. So much more powerful when you can say the like we got Butch Witkowski here, everyone. The Butch Witkowski. <laughs> See what I mean? 
Just it, it gives that power. We got uh, one minute, ten seconds. All right, a big thank you to Jason, Fabster, Blue Book, Dirt Road Times 2, Mennonite Abe, Tim, Smithy, and uh, Black Dragon for the amazing Super Chats. It's a great way to take care of what we do here on Space Down Radio on a nightly basis. Thank you to all our veterans who are tuning on in, taking us in tonight. And, of course, thank you to all of our regulars who are hanging on out as well. You guys make it so much fun. RB, how you doing? And uh, I like this comment. Right there, Butch. I'll let you take that as we come back from commercial. You're listening to Spaced Out Radio with Dave Scott. Follow Dave on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Facebook Spaced Out Radio Show. Hour number two of Spaced Out Radio is underway tonight. My name is Dave Scott. Thank you so much for taking the time to Join us. We really do appreciate earning your listening ears wherever you are on this beautiful planet we call Earth. Thank you to everyone tuning us in on our terrestrial affiliates around North America and digitally on TalkStream Live, Revolution Radio, and KPNL. All of our archives are free by going to youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Just do old Davey the favor. Hit that subscribe button. The Desert Clam has set the password for tonight in the SOR Space Travelers Club. Defervescence. Defervescence is your password. Use it wisely, Space Travelers, as the Clam sets the password each and every night right here on Spaced Out Radio. Our website is spacedoutradio.com where we have a plethora of features for you including rocking out to Bumblefoot and reading up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire. Follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Instagram, Spaced Out Radio Show. Now, Butch, comment coming in from the chat room here, you know, basically uh, saying that, uh, you know, you you always have this look on your face that, that you've just smelled something really, really odorous. But- I had a shower. But nonetheless, RB in our chat room says, I like grouchy old dudes, you know. So, I mean, there there you go. There it is right there. I mean, Butch Witkowski's Strange Days happens at near the end of each month where we bring on Big Bad Butch to talk about everything that's going on in the supernatural and paranormal fields. And, you know, we're going to get to some audience questions as we uh, come up to this uh, this part of the show. But, Butch, for you as someone who is you know, looking for a lot of these really cool creatures out there. What's the drive? What keeps you going? Just the hunt for the truth. You know, <laughs> I've been at this so long now, and, and I've I've heard so much nonsense over the years. I mean, whether it was within different groups or it was on the boob tube or in a book or something it just you know it's just that it it it's that that hunt you know it's like does something like this really exist well ufos that pretty much took care of itself after the first couple sightings but the rest of this stuff it's crazy i i just it's just a hunt for the truth you know, uh, I've met a lot of interesting people, uh, met a few loonies, but um, it's 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 gotten to the point where it's fun, where I get to deal with people that ask real questions, uh, like the sword, the, the sword 
people here. I mean, uh, the, you know, the, the spaced out radio group. I mean, nobody's ever asked a dumb question. They've always asked good questions. But I've been on shows already where it was like the comedy hour. And, you know, they're looking for an answer. And I'm going like, you know, I really want to get out of here. Maybe I can cut the phone wire or, you know, turn the computer off or something. But it's it's just a hunt for the truth. You know, I just want to know the truth. I mean, nobody has to convince me about UFOs. I mean, I've seen enough of those already. Uh, but the the different things, just, you know, like the apparitions, uh, to learn more about the apparitions and, and why that happens or, uh, you know, the, the, the bipedal canine or Bigfoot. Uh, I mean, you know, it's like I just got to know. <laughs> it's, just, it's like a it's like a bug in the brain. You know, you just want to know. And and, you know, I thought to myself a couple of times, well, whatever turns out to be, you know, nothing but bull crap. Well, then that's the way it works out. But I just don't think that anymore. There's something out there. And it's just not, it's just not um, UFOs or Bigfoot or bipedals. There's something out there. You know, you can't say that everybody that gives you a report's a liar. I mean, especially when you get report A at this end of the state and B at this end of the state, and they've seen the same thing. Now, <laughs> uh, people see what they see. Some people see what they want to see. But um, I don't know. I just think it's uh, I've always it's always caught me like that from day one. I just have to know. And um, like I said, I met a lot of great researchers in the field. And, um, you know, some of these guys, I thought I put time in. These guys are out every weekend. Rain, snow, sleet, it don't matter. They're out. And, you know, they're in areas uh, uh, kind of like where you're at. Lots of trees, <laughs> you know, lots of creatures walking around the woods you don't want to mess with. Uh, we have our few here, but it's like, I don't know. It's, uh, and these things have been around for a long time, whether it's Bigfoot or bipedal canines or, or UFOs or, uh, I mean, they've just been around so long. And, you know, one thing I, I do fault researchers on, some researchers, not all, some, they don't do, you know, they'll get a report and then they'll take it from there and move forward. Well, the proper way of doing it is take the report, move backwards, research the area, research the property, you know, uh, uh, that's how I found that, that case of the bipedal in uh, Erie, just back, going backwards. Um, and another thing I, I fault them on is, and not all, some, when they go out and they're looking over a scene, what they should be looking for is something that does not belong there. Not what they expect to find, but it shouldn't be there. Like, uh, if, if it's a gifting site and the guy puts his little gift on a tree stump or something like that, and uh, it's not there anymore. Well, then he just gives up, turns around and walks away. But if he would have walked 10 more feet in any direction, he would have saw that it was on another stump or, you know, it was hanging from a tree. You know, uh, it's just taking that extra step of things that shouldn't be there are the things you should be looking for. Whether it's a footprint, hair, what a scat, whatever. Uh, going to a site and just figuring out that you're going to get a, uh, a shot with a camera of Bigfoot or a bipedal canine, that's pretty much not going to happen. But um, if you'd spend some time at the site, if you walked around, uh, you know, maybe there's a partial footprint or a, uh, like up in northern Washington where the, the guys were following one footprint and they kind of gave up after a day of following it to nowhere. And actually, the foot, the, whatever the creature was, presumably a Bigfoot and a, a smaller Bigfoot, had turned right, stepped over a, a, a log, which pretty much ended the track they were following. And there it was. There was the big footprint on one side and the smaller print on the other side. And they followed that till it actually went down to water and then they lost it. 
but now that's the way to do it. You, you know, you want to take it to the nth. Don't don't get there and you know, oh man, there's, he's not here anymore. Well, I didn't think he was going to be there, but maybe he left something, or maybe it left something. Uh, we've collected bones. Uh, I have them in the library right now under the microscope. A couple. I'm, I I want to study a little bit more of the bite mark of a regular wolf, just a, a plain old gray wolf out of Canada or any place else. And then I want to match that to other bones where I've seen uh, that type of mark. So if it, it, if it was a, um, a larger bipedal canine, the bite, the bite pattern is going to be much different, much larger. And then we'll take it from there. Cousin Gary Cousin in Edmonton, Gary Edmonton is asking, are you familiar with the moon-eyed people of Appalachia who live underground, only come out at night as they're blinded by the sunlight? That that has been around for a long, long time. That goes back to the, um, I think the first reports came up right at the end of the Civil War in the 18, early 1870s, I believe. And there's a lot of reports on that in, in Appalachia. I mean, that's, um, you know, certain areas have their certain monsters or their certain oddities. And Appalachia has a lot of them. But, uh, yeah, the Moonite people, oh, yeah, they've been around a long time. Matter of fact, there, there are even um, statements of, uh, in Indian lore of the Moonite people in Appalachia, where Indians would... Uh, I'm going to say they were at war with them, but I mean, if you know, they didn't like they went out and hunted them, but it seemed like wherever they went, the Moon Eyed people would be put up a little scuffle. But uh, when they chased them down and you know tried to get them, they always disappeared underground, and the Indians wouldn't go underground. So, yeah, that's 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 an old story, but who knows? They say you got reptiles living under Los Angeles, which I could believe probably Democrats. Now, when you sit there and talk about moon-eyed people, what are people seeing here? Um, short in stature uh, in the five foot range, uh, stocky built, look like they're overfed. Um, very, uh, uh, round, round eyes, uh, large round eyes. Uh, color varies depending on what part of Appalachia you're from. And uh, like uh, Gary just said here, they, they only allegedly come out at night uh, because if they come out during the day, they, they can't take the sunlight, so they got to go back underground. But um, there is a, um, a really good book on that. Uh, the only problem is I think the only place you're going to get it is, in, is down in West Virginia in the, along the Appalachian area there in the mountains. But uh, there's, there's a book out on them. And some drawings, but a lot of people don't talk about it because it's not something like there's not moon people in Philadelphia or L.A. or Canada. They're just in Appalachia. All right. Now it could could be just a local thing, but again, a lot of stories, a lot a lot of witnesses. Jurassic Joey is asking, Butch, could things like Bigfoot or Dogman be actual alien experiments let loose on Earth for them to study? Sure, why not? I mean, there's no no beginning of these things. I mean, there's not like uh, the birth of the Bigfoot or the birth of the Dogman or anything like that. I mean, they've been around for a long, long time, <laughs> you know, hundreds of years. I mean, the indigenous talked about them. Uh, the the uh, uh, and that's where it started, really, with the indigenous. Uh, well, I, well, not really, because there were there were Spanish, there were conquistadors that uh, recorded uh, sightings of large hairy men and um, uh, half man, half animal type of creatures running around when they were busting their butt in California and in Mexico and stuff. So, been around a long time. All right, let's move on to Ella's question here. 
Butch, have you had any coinciding men in black Bigfoot sightings reported? No. Mm -mm. Nope. Now, if you would have said men in black UFO sightings, yes, <laughs> but well, not Bigfoot. Well, no. let's get into that. Men in black UFOs. What do you got happening there? Well, uh, I got involved in a case where um, here in Pennsylvania, it was a, a, a UFO sighting. And um, I got a call uh, from, uh, oh, what's his name? Just skip my brain. Uh, the guy that had Skinwalker Ranch. Oh, my God. Robert Bigelow? Bentley. Yeah, mm -hmm. Bigelow. I got a, a call from one of Bigelow's uh, at the house here. Uh, not this house, the other house. I got a call at the home. Uh and the guy was a uh, investigator for Robert Bigelow. And he said he saw that uh, I had placed a uh, report on MUFON. Uh, and uh, he wanted to know more about it. And I just told him, you know, this is what it is. This is what I found. And uh, that's it, you know. And he just kept going on and on. He took maybe a, a five-minute answer and turned it into almost like a one-hour excursion in my brain um so I, I left it go at that and then when i got involved uh, with doing the human mutilations uh, i'd given my first presentation in 2006 or 7 and um, i had come home that sunday and monday morning like at nine o'clock the phone rang and there was a number there and I didn't recognize it, but I picked it up and said hello. And all I got was you really need to back off of what you're doing. And it hung up. So I called the number back and nothing happened. Wasn't there. No number. So I'm assuming that was, you know, somebody from the government telling me to mind my own business, <laughs> but I didn't stop. I continued on. And then probably three years after that, uh, I was speaking in Lawrence, Kansas. And um, I probably was home maybe three, four days at that point. And phone rang and the guy gave me some fictitious name, like Bill Jones or something like that. And he was a, a researcher and he was researching uh, human mutilations and all he wanted to know was where I got my information. How did I get a hold of the autopsy report for this? How did I get the pictures of that? Blah, 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 blah. And when I said, well, you know, if you look, they're there. And he hung up on me. So I'm pretty sure that was the only two times I was involved with any of those guys. What's that like when they, come, like calling? When they come calling? I don't know. It's kind of weird because, they, you know, it's like they, they start talking to you like they've known you all your life. They probably do, but but when they start asking dumb questions like, "Well, when did they find the body? What time was it? Where exactly was the body located? Uh, what about this case in England that you're working on? Well, how did they know that? I didn't publish anything about the case in England. Nothing, but they know about it. Uh, well, what, what's your thoughts on what happened? Those kind of questions. I'm going like, mm, this ain't good." <laughs> So I just get on there and play dumb as usual, and pretty much they get bored and hang up. End of story. Is it still, Is it still happening? Like, do we still have these cases of men in black coming through? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the government ain't going to let anything go. If they, if they got an inkling that you know something that they don't want you to know, you'll get a visit or a phone call, or you'll get audited by the IRS. <laughs> Um, I, I just, there's just so many things that if you look are available to the public, but when you get involved in it, I mean, I lost a computer one time and that was no joke. It was very, my computers are not cheap. I buy the best I can get. And uh, I was messing around one time looking at underground bases. And we have one here in Pennsylvania. 
and I was the half website. So I'm on the website and uh, here, there, and everywhere. And I wasn't seeing anything specific like plans or or photographs or anything like that. It was just a lot of a lot of mumbo jumbo stories and what it's used for. And in case of an atomic attack, these guys are going to be living there. And next thing you know, my computer went off. I mean, off. Like I shut it off. I tried to start it up again. Nothing. I couldn't get it to start. I tried everything. So I went over to another computer and that was fine. So I figured, well, okay, well, this one took a crap. So got all my computer guy and, and, you know, took it over to his house. And I said, call me when it's done. Well, about two hours later, he calls me, he says, what did you do? I said, nothing. I was just on a website. That's it. And I said, it went off, period. He said, went off. He said, this computer is empty. There is nothing in your computer. No emails, no websites, nothing blank. Your hard drive is clean as a pin. No operating system, nothing. I went like, what can do that? He says, there's only one outfit that can do that. And I went like, "Uh oh, he said, what site were you on? And I told him and he says, like, don't ever do that again. So me like a dummy, I tell one of my guys about it, right? And he's got a brand new uh, Sony Vio laptop. I said, don't, you don't want to do that. Don't mess around with that stuff. Well, as like most of my guys, they don't listen to me anyway. So he did it. And exactly the same thing happened. His laptop was just a piece of junk plastic. And there was no way, I, I mean, he couldn't even rebuild my computer. He said, everything's gone. He said, circuits don't go where they're supposed to go. He said, they're all tied up. He said, it's just a mess. And I said, all right, well, I'll just scrap it. I'll get another one. He said, there's nothing on the hard drive. So he said, you don't have to worry about that. He said, that's that's clean as a pin. He said, there's nothing there, no operating system, nothing. It's zero. He said, it's just like a, the, system, the hard drive just came out of the factory yesterday. There's nothing on it. I went like, oh, crap. <laughs> well, I learned my lesson there. I don't mess around those sites anymore. <laughs> That was an expensive trip. So do they watch us? Yes, they watch us all the time. You know, we're on Facebook and all these other things. and We make it easy. We make it easy. Yeah, yeah, we make it easy for them. But when, you know, when uh, an investigator from Bigelow calls me from Nevada to ask me about something I just posted on, in, on MUFON, I mean, it just like, first thing that came to my mind was like, What's this all about? But he just kept asking questions, questions. It was all done. He said, well, thank you very much. You helped a great deal. And that was it. Space he could have read it. It was, on the, it was on the internet. It was on, it was on the website. That's where he got it to begin with. Was that now, during whether, the time when whether, Bigelow had bought into MUFON? What's that? Was that in the time when Bigelow had bought into MUFON? Yes. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he was getting he was getting reports before we got them. Because that report, I remember I got the report on a Monday, Monday evening. I talked to the person Tuesday morning, got the photographs from the person Tuesday afternoon, and he called Tuesday evening. All right. All right. We've got about 30 seconds here. Quick one from from uh let's see here from space cow butch can we force the government to fess up with proof i doubt it they haven't they haven't given any proof so far. even with all this stuff that just happened recently i mean no it just no they're not going to do anything i mean all that little stuff they let go like you know the the tic tac video and stuff like that um, it's all gone by. Everybody forgot about that already. Very true. Very true. Butch, I'm going to get you to hold on right there. We got Butch Wachowski for another hour here on Strange Days. Your questions in the chat room. Monster talk. Missing people. And whatever else we can bug Butch about. UFOCop.com is his website. We'll be back with more Wachowski Strange Days on SOR.
All right, we're clear. Wayland, how you doing, buddy? Well, look who's arrived, everyone. Chad Smith has arrived. The Chad Smith. Remember, you can go into our website, spacedoutradio.com. Let me show you here. All right. Let me show you here. All you do is go into spacedoutradio.com. There's lovely Lynn. There's that handsome guy. You go into shop right up here. And the first thing we have is Chad Smith wrench t-shirts. Right there, right off the bat. But wait, there's more. You can choose your color. And if you scroll down, we got six other products on this page. Chad Smith stickers. Women's Chad Smith shirts. Unisex baseball t-shirts. If you're one of those mask people, well, how would you feel walking around with a Chad Smith mask on? It's the way we roll around here. It's the way we roll. Can't help it, Butch. Even Butch is a Chad Smith fan. Mm-hmm. That's right. Alex Kuhn, how are you? Oh, you want me to show you my shirt? Okay. Uh, this says, uh, rolling with my nomies. There we go. Yep. Hello, Butchster, my old friend. <laughs> I've come to hunt dog man with you again. Hey, Hack Service, how you doing, buddy? <clears throat> The gorgeous and talented Jennifer Hawkins has arrived, everyone. Why do you build me up, butchy cup baby, just to let me down? Spin me around, and worst of all, you never call back when you say you will. But I love you still, butch. <laughs> What is in that vape? <laughs> That's what I want to know. That's uh, grape grape ice. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Hey, FVGBE342. Been a while. Good to have you here. Yes, there are Chad Smith shirts in the store, Magnus. You need one. You totally need one. Uh-oh, Butch is so popular, he turned down an invitation to be Chad Smith and remained Butch. That is awesome. Got about a minute 20 here. Yeah, see, even Spooky's calling you Butchy Cup now. <laughs> <clears throat> what can I say? The audience loves you, Butch. They're my kind of people. <laughs> mm -hmm. Even Alicia wants one of them Chad Smith t-shirts in pink. Patrick says Butch should start making cheese. RB says Chad Smith... Fears Butch. All right, a big thank you to Alicia, Jason, Fabster, 
Blue Book, Dirt Road Times 2, Mennonite Abe, Tim, Smithy, and Black Dragon for the amazing Super Chats. And uh, we're going to continue on here in about 20 seconds. Big thank you to all the veterans tuning on in tonight. We love you. You always have a safe home here. And all the regulars hanging out, having fun with us. We're almost at 200 in the live tonight. Let's see if we can hit that. And uh, we're close. We're close. Let's get going here. Get your horns up. Rock and roll. Right, Light it up. And Dave's tired. I'm not going to lie, but we're going to do this. past the halfway point of Spaced Out Radio tonight. My name is Dave Scott. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. We really do appreciate earning your listening ears. want to remind you that if you miss most of this show or others, check out our free archives by going to youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Do old Davey the favor. Hit that subscribe button. Our website is spacedoutradio.com where we have a plethora of features for you, including rocking out to Bumblefoot and reading up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire. Follow us on Twitter, at Spaced Out Radio, and on Instagram, Spaced Out Radio Show. Strange Days with Butch Witkowski continues right now as Butch comes in from UF4Cop.com, joins us once a month near the end of each month to tell us about the strange days that was for the month of September. Butch, welcome back. Yes, sir. What's the weirdest case you've got this month? Uh, would probably be the apparitions. How about Bigfoot? No, no Bigfoot. UFOs? Yes. Yeah, a number of those. Give us a good one. Uh... Best one was multi-witness, four people. Uh, there's a, maybe 15 miles from where I live, there's a, a, a pretty large um, shopping mall. And um, they were get, the mall was closing up. It was like 10 o'clock. And uh, two of the people worked together in the same store. And another guy was closing up his shop. And then another one was like just a customer. And... The two guys from the that worked together, they were looking up and they saw this thing zigzagging across the sky and it was bright white, but it had like a, a tail coming off it. And the one guy said, well, probably a meteor or a bolide. And the guy goes like, meteors and bolides don't have tails that zigzag. He said they have tails, but they don't zigzag. And this thing was, he said it was very, very dominant with the zigzagging. And he said it was fast. It was really fast. And, uh, and he said, besides that, he said, if you saw a meteor or a bolide, by the time you'd see it, it would be gone. So, uh, and then everybody saw it. I mean, everybody described the same thing. So that was probably the best one. But multi witness sightings are always the best. They really are the best. For those who have multi witness sightings, what are you looking for in multi witness sightings that's different from, say, an eyewitness account um just the fact that everybody describing the same thing at the same time at the same place and you never question them together ever you know you always get them apart and uh you know it, if one guy's saying it was pink and another guy's saying it was green you're going like mm, this isn't good <laughs> it just really isn't good but when everybody's describing exactly the same thing at the same time and they're describing the same motion and color and everything else, chances are that they all saw the same thing. All right. Let's move on here. Uh, FVGBE has a question in the chat room for you. How come we haven't heard about Dogman stories pre-2000s? Oh, they go way back. Uh, if, if you... Um... Just if you just would punch in uh, Google uh, werewolf or bipedal canine or uh, dog man in Pennsylvania, 
you'll see that in the 60s, 50s, 40s, uh, some going back to the 20s, there's, there's quite a few of them. Well, I mean, uh, Linda Godfrey's Beast of Bray Road ar- article came out in 1989, too. Uh-huh. So, yeah. I mean, there is precedence for pre-2000s. I think what's happened here is the Internet really took over and blew this creature up. I think that's yeah. what's happened here. Yeah, yeah. All right, Tuhak is asking, why the Egyptians related so much to their gods to Hannibal animal hybrids and if there ever was the possibility of their existence, ancient aliens maybe modified the human genome? What's your thoughts, Butch? Well, uh, every dynasty in Egypt had their different gods. Um, you know, some were half man, half bird. Uh, some were half man, half crocodile, uh, half dog. I mean, it just there were so many. It, it really depended on the dynasty. Uh, and what they were worshiping at that time, uh, except, uh, you know, uh, Akhenaten's uh, father, was it? Or something like that. I think it was Akhenaten, uh, was a sun god. So all those deities of of, uh, half man, half whatever, kind of went away, and then it was all the sun god. But... Could ancient aliens have modified the human gnome? Eh, yeah, why not? We don't know enough. I mean, for all the stuff that we found and all the stuff they're still finding in Egypt, I mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, they just they just dug up a whole family of high pollutant, fancy Egyptians that were pre pyramid by like fifteen hundred years. There's just so much we don't know. I mean, everybody thinks that we've got it all nailed. We ain't even close. We're not even close. You know, it's just, it's crazy. It's just crazy. Uh, there's, there are so many things that could happen or could have happened that we don't know about. And, um, you know, whatever comes up, comes up and just follow it as best you can. You know, try to get as much information as you can. But Egyptian gods changed pretty much on a dynasty basis. Whoever was the next um, hotshot, that was the guy that made all the rules and and uh, deities that they worshipped for hundreds of years went out the window and somebody else took their place. And that's pretty much the whole history of Egypt. Like the, the uh, Sphinx. When they really started looking at the Sphinx uh, uh, quite a number of years ago, they said, well, you know, it was just rot. It, it was falling apart. It was the, the desert was destroying it. And when they really got into it and started using all kind of electronics and stuff like that, they found out that, you know, it, it wasn't a lion uh, that was up there. Uh, and then they did. did there were just too many, too many, too many marks that something has changed, and um, turned out it was a, it, it, originally it was a statue of Anubis. That happens. That happens. All right, Brutus has a question here. Butch, do you know why the Vatican has an observatory? Uh, the Vatican has had an observatory for hundreds of years. Hundreds of years. Um, whatever happens in the Vatican stays in the Vatican. That's no joke. The Vatican archives, um, something like, uh, 2.5 million volumes of information that very, very, a handful of people have actually seen other than the people who work down there. Uh, there's no way you can get near those, um, some people say that if they ever got to them, that would be religion would just be turned upside down on its head. Uh, I've heard these stories since <laughs> I was a little guy. And I'm Catholic, Roman Catholic. So um, I'm familiar with the observatory. Uh, it's one of the best and biggest in the world. 
and um, it's it runs 24 7 365 I mean it's it's always manned it's always moving and they don't share anything nothing I've always no. wondered why yeah why what's, what's the that's secret? a great question why I mean do they know something that we don't about something that's out there that we have no idea what it is that's very possible but the vatican has always been super secretive i mean you know it's um you know people laugh about uh, dan brown's books dan brown's books are pretty close to the fact as it's written you know with the with the illuminati and that whole group i mean it's just there's all kind of stuff going on and uh I mean, I get this stuff all the time, and I'm not even a member of any of those groups. So I'm just going to show you something real quick. Sure. I get this once a month. Can you see it? The Illuminati News. And what's that about? Well, it's a secret order. Um, They're arch enemies. Opus Dei, another Catholic organization. These guys have been at war with each other from day one. Uh, Illuminati would probably, more people would recognize Illuminati as like um, the Shriners, uh, those groups there, like that. But um, I don't know why I'm on their list. Never joined, but I get both of those religiously <laughs> that was a pun i i figured that one figure okay. that one all right sovereign wants to know butch have you ever had your keys vanish from either a sasquatch or a gnome no usually my wife has them in her purse follow-up question have you ever yelled at a monster my mother-in-law How am I supposed to follow up with that? I'm curious, Butch. Did you lose us? No, I'm still here. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out how to respond to that. There is no response for that. <laughs> That's just a fact. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Now, but for you, how close do you think you've been to some of these monsters? I think I've been a lot closer than I thought. I mean, uh, we were looking, I forget what we were even looking for. Uh, we were looking for a site of something, and um, we got barraged uh, with rocks off the top of a hill. And I don't mean little rocks, I mean big rocks. And if they would have had any more accuracy, if they would have looked over the hill, they probably would have killed the both of us. But, I mean, you know, and it, there was something up there. I mean, we tried to get up there as quick as we could. It was just a little hill. We got there and nothing. And there were no rocks laying around. There was none on the path we were on. But they were coming. So. When you say they, how many? Three. Three rocks. One hit the ground, one hit a tree, and one went out of sight pretty much into the woods. No other sounds, anything like that. Evan wants to know, why have you stopped talking about human mutilations? Uh, I really haven't stopped. I still have uh, some connections over in uh, England and in um, Brazil. Um, I'm watching Brazil a lot because I think they had another one not long before or not long after the one that became world famous where they had the pictures and everything. And, and um, I got to speak to the guy's lawyer. I, I mean, it was that was more open than I think people wanted it to be. But uh, England has had their share. Any more in the, United, more States? In the United States? Uh, no, but we have so many missing people, uh, we don't know. I mean, there's just, I mean, you're talking about a couple hundred thousand people missing every year. 
you know, you, can, you, you can't even keep up with that. I mean, the, the, the information is available on the, on the FBI site. I mean, you know, you go on there and, you, you know, under missing persons and they're all listed. And, uh, but that's pretty much it. They get, give you a list, you know, when they, when they went missing and what they look like or what the situation was or, you know, if they were just a runaway or if it was a, an abduction or, you know, that. No, there's just no, no rhyme or reason to that stuff. I mean, there's just so many people missing. And that's actually how I found the uh, human mutilations. Well, I was, I was going through missing persons and uh, stumbled across that. And then, you know, found another one and found another one and then found another one. And, you know, it just it was like a steady progression there for a while. And then a lot of that stuff just vanished off the Internet. It's just gone. I mean, I printed it all. I have it all. But the stuff that I, even the stuff I have isn't there anymore. Is this is one of those cases, cases that, that is being be... covered up, so to speak? Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, when you tell somebody about, uh, you know, cattle being mutilated, they go, oh, well, it's a space creature, whatever, blah, blah, blah. You tell somebody that a human has been butchered up like that, exactly the same as a cattle, they get a little nervous. They get a little upset. And and the guy in Brazil, I mean, I could take pictures of... of um, tell that story. The guy in Brazil. Uh, okay, uh, well... Um, it uh, the, the the body was found in uh, in Brazil. Um, yeah, there's a huge lake there that supplies the water for for uh, a number of towns. Um, it's called the Gua, uh, Guadaparanga Dam, and some guys are out there fishing, and they looked on the shore, and they looked like there was somebody sunning themselves. That's what they thought. And they rode over and they saw it was a body. And instead of just going and saying nothing, they actually went to the police. And the police, which is really out of the norm, uh, sent a forensic team out. And they did the photographing and this, that, and the other thing. And everything that was done to a cow, like um, eyes removed, ears, uh, inner ear, tongue, um, uh, muffle. Uh, tissue, lymph nodes, uh, anal area was cored out. It, it, it's exactly like a cattle mutilation. And um, so that was pretty much all they put out. And then I kept digging, digging, digging. And um, through the Brazilian police department, I got a hold of the autopsy report. And the autopsy report um, came through. And it was like a ho hum out autopsy report, like I've seen many others, and and then it got to the point where it said that uh, according to everything that they found, the gentleman was alive when all this took place. Uh, if you would take uh, a human and stab him, you're gonna have an open cut in blood. If and you you will have uh, you know a black and blue mark around where the puncture was. I mean that's just because you you you've, you've caused that you've caused that damage. If a person's dead and you stab them, all you're going to have is a hole. No blood. There's no marks or anything. It's just going to have the hole. And every mark in his body showed that he was alive when that took place. So all the wounds were not post mortem. It's horrible. And they figured he was dead approximately 40 hours, 32 or 33 years in age. And then they blamed it on a retarded kid. Um, in, I'll, I'll, I'll jump in here. So they never got anything out of him. But at the same particular time, there was another uh, mutilation in, in Egypt. And right outside of Cairo, where a whole family was butchered, everybody was butchered the same way. Men, women, children, cats, dogs, chickens, whatever they had in the house was done the same way. So they blamed it on a retarded kid, that kind of a retarded guy that kind of lived down the street. And they had him up on murder charges 
multiple murders. And um, when they figured out that this guy, let alone stabbing somebody and doing all that stuff, like removing eyes and stuff, there was no way. This guy couldn't even tie his shoes. I mean, he was that retarded. I did get to talk to him. Got to get you to use the word handicap. Okay. Um, so he was this handicapped gentleman. Uh, I got to talk to his lawyer, found out who the lawyer was, got to talk to the lawyer. She got him off the hook, uh, till this, well, I don't even know if he's alive anymore because he was in his forties, uh, back then, uh, 10, 15, 15 years ago. Well, maybe he is, but anyway, um, the lawyer got him off. I mean, there was no way this guy could commit this crime. I mean, he could barely speak, couldn't tie his own shoes. Uh, if he walked outside the door, he had to have somebody with him because he'd walk off, get lost. So the court said, okay, we won't try him for murder, but till the day he dies, he will not leave that house without, without the company of two police officers. And that was in, in effect where, you know, if he went, if he went to the, to, to religious services or went to the store with his parents, uh, he had two cops with him. So they never left him alone, basically. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Mm-hmm. And there's been a number of those. We, there was a body found in um, uh, Colorado, up in the mountains. Uh, they don't never know. They never knew who the guy was, um, or you know what he did or anything like that. But found the same way. England guy found the same way. I mean, it's just crazy. Uh, you know, it's. Uh, and then um, Linda Godfrey. <laughs> She uh, says, well, these catamulations are caused by flies. 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 When the guys in England, the two researchers in England, have been studying human mutilations over there, man, did they rip her <laughs> big time. I never bothered because I figured, that ah, she's just looking for some fame and fortune there. But there was no way flies did this. I mean, cows have multiple stomachs. So every doctor that we've ever talked to or ever was interviewed to remove the udders from a cow and not hit a stomach with a scalpel is impossible. This can't be done. And these were laser precision cuts that took that right out and no, no damage to the uh, stomachs at all. Same thing with the eyes. Precision cuts, the tongue, precision cuts, everything precision cuts. Now, when you say, no, when you say precision, <laughs> precision cuts, are you leaning more towards laser or or very, very sh uh, sh sharp knife? Nope, laser. No, you couldn't do it. Many, they, I don't know how many pathologists they had questioned over time that if they could do that with a knife and the guy goes, no way. I said, no, you can't do it. I mean... They would cut through the hide and the skin to the bone, but they never touched the bone. Now, if you're cutting meat off a bone, you know you're going to hit the bone. But this is a perfectly round circle, uh, no blood, and the eye is removed. There's no viscous fluid or anything like that, and it's just perfect. And then when they came up with laser, everybody got crazy because they said, do you realize how big a laser you would need to do that? I mean, we're not talking about something you're going to carry in a lunch bucket. You're talking about something that has to come in on a tractor trailer. And at the scene of these things, even in the snow, there's no footprints, there's no blood, there's no this, no that. I mean, it's just like they were here, they got done in, and that's where they laid. End of story. And they weren't wild animal attacks because wild animals go for the soft spot. They go right for the stomach in entrails and stuff like that. And I had pictures of wolf attacks, bear attacks on cattle. Don't look nuts. I mean, th these, these mutilations are sterile. They're perfect. Uh, and now just in the last three, Hold that four thought. years. Hold that thought. We're going to go to break okay. here. At the top of the hour, we have Butch Wachowski and Strange Days here for another 30 minutes. Next half hour at the bottom, John Hudson returns for the UFO Report. We'll be back with Hour 3 of Space Out Radio next.
All right, we're clear. Okay. Get me in trouble, man. Who? You. Why? What did I do? Politically incorrect words. Oh, my. I know. I'm going to have to go slap myself. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. I'm going to go fill up my water because okay. I'm done. I'll be right back, brother. Okay. You, you want to chat with the people here or do you want me to mute you? No, you can mute it. All right. Be right back. All right, I'm back. Long trip, I know. Now I can breathe. Oh. There we go. There's a nice question for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's my audience uh, right there. Never, never counted. Couldn't tell you. Flies. Hmm. Flies. Terrible times, how are you? This will be our next question from the lovely and talented Caroline Start. She always likes that extra T pronounced too, so she's Start. Start. You having fun yet, Butchie Pie? Oh, yeah. Always. He's my Butchie Pie. 
Sweet Butchie we Pie. An album. We totally do. We totally do. Let's see if we can get something a little older here. Shoshan, how are you? Welcome to our chat room. All right, we got uh, 20 seconds here. Big thank you to Brutus, Alicia, Jason, Fabster, Blue Book, Dirt Road Times 2, Mennonite Abe, Tim, Smithy, and Black Dragon for the amazing super chat. Thank you so much for everybody uh, helping us out. It's a great way to support this show. Thank you to all the veterans tuning us in. And, of course, to all our regulars in the chat room. Get your horns up. Here we go at the third hour. Let's do this. Would you like to connect with us? Head to spacedoutradio.com for all your latest show info. Now, back to Dave Scott and SOR. Third and final hour of Spaced Out Radio is underway tonight. My name is Dave Scott. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. We really do appreciate earning your listening ears. Want to say hello to everyone listening in on our terrestrial affiliates around North America, digitally on TalkStream Live, Revolution Radio, and KPNL. All of our archives are free. What you got to do is go to youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Just do old Davey the favor. Hit that subscribe button. The Desert Clam has set the password for tonight in the SOR Space Travelers Club. Defervescence. Defervescence is your password. Use it wisely, Space Travelers, as the Clam sets the password each and every night right here on Spaced Out Radio. Our website, spacedoutradio.com. We have a plethora of features for you. Check out our new swag. Rock out to Bumblefoot or read up on Shirky Poo's Newswire. Follow us on Twitter, at Spaced Out Radio, and on Instagram, Spaced Out Radio Show. For the final time tonight, Butch Witkowski's Strange Days. UF4Cop.com is Butch's website, based out of Pennsylvania. Height unknown, weight unknown, hair unknown. Butch Witkowski, welcome back. <laughs> Happy to be back. <laughs> All right, Caroline Start wants to know, Butch, can you talk about the Todd C's case? Give for people who may not know what it is, give it a rundown of this case quickly. Well, a uh, gentleman uh, left his house uh, very early in the morning to go spot preseason deer on his ATV and um, went missing. He was supposed to be back at uh, two o'clock in the afternoon. No show up, so the family went out looking for him, couldn't find him. Uh, police were called, 200 searchers showed up, dogs, horses, ATVs, all over the place. They couldn't find him. They did find the ATV, um, but no no Todd C's. Um, the next day, uh, the, search, the search started again. Uh, rescue teams from all over the place looking for this guy. Uh, the... Um, ATV was found a mile away from the house. It's a very rocky area. We've been there a number of times. It's, I mean, you can't walk anywhere without hurting your feet, I, even with hunting boots on. I mean, it was just, it's just terrible rocky. And they owed a, he owned quite a bit of property up there. Uh, I f- believe it was six or eight acres. But anyhow, um, there's a road that uh, took you up into the wooded area, uh, which is right inside of his house on his property where all the searchers and horses and everything, dogs and all, were going up through there, cadaver dogs a little bit. Um, that e- that evening, uh, the body was found uh, on the property uh, next to a downed tree, 25 yards from the house. Now, how everybody walked past that body in the condition it was in, 
uh, which I'll get to here in a second, was uh, unbelievable. If you've ever passed roadkill on a hot day, you know what you're smelling. But this guy did not, uh, there was nobody. He was actually found by his son uh, on the property. Uh, autopsy showed that he had advanced stages of uh, deterioration, uh, the body, uh, skin hanging, green, uh, the whole nine yards. He had no drug, no uh, accident or, or drug arrests or anything like that. Um, state police didn't even know him. Um, uh, he was uh, a real fan of the Little League baseball team. Um, he um, had nothing out of the ordinary. Just Joe Blow, you know, drove a bread truck. But when we started to look into information on him, I mean, we couldn't find social security number, driver's license, uh, anything. Military record, uh, marriage record, uh, kids' births, nothing. And uh, here in Pennsylvania, you can go on the social security death index. And when, when that started happening, I thought, well, is that everybody like that? So I pulled up my father. And his name was there, date of birth, phone number, address, uh, the kids. Um, my, my mother's name, uh, when they were married, what school he went to. I mean, that whole, everything, his whole life was there. This guy, zero, nothing like he didn't even exist. And, um, the, the body was in bad shape, really bad, uh, for being out only the number of hours, and I think it was like 20 hours outside, and it was hot, but not to put a body in that condition. I mean, that body looked like, from the description of the autopsy report, like it had been out there for a month in the heat. And then they wrote it up as a cocaine overdose. Um, they couldn't get any blood out of any place in his body where you normally would during an autopsy, which would be the chest area. They had to get out of the lower leg vein. And uh, the amount of uh, degraded cocaine that was in his system would have killed the horse. Uh, when I talked to pathologists and showed them the autopsy report, they said, look, with that amount of degraded, uh, uh, degraded cocaine in the system, he wouldn't have been able to walk five feet without falling over dead. So they found no needle marks. He had no, no background in the use of drugs, selling drugs, using drugs or anything like that. And... Um, it was just nothing that nothing in the case struck home. I mean, it was just, I talked to family members, uh, uh, Lon Strickler got involved with me and I was in it about three years when Lon got involved and, um, <laughs> it was just, it happened and it went away. That was it. But we still haven't located the son. Uh, we've tried to talk to the police and fire company, rescue teams and stuff like that. They wouldn't, wouldn't see us. We sat outside in the police department for hours and hours waiting for them to come back off duty. Well, they went home. They, they want to talk to us. We called the emergency number of the fire company to talk to the chief to find out what the dispatch hours were. Line was disconnected. The emergency line, right? So uh, we just got shut down at every corner. Uh, we've been to the area a number of times. There is no way all those research, all those searchers, rescue teams, horses, dogs, cadaver dogs, walk past that body, which was 25 yards from the house and about 15 yards from the road they were walking up. Don't know. Uh, there, there was absolutely no, no, uh, anything that we could find talking to friends of his school people he went to school with that, you know, he didn't do anything. He didn't smoke any marijuana. He didn't take any cocaine. He didn't do nothing. And we talked to the, uh, uh one trooper who was in charge of all the drug, um, things going on in three counties. And that was one County like, and, uh, Northumberland County. And he said, I never heard of the guy and I can't find anything on the guy. So he wasn't doing any dealing or buying or anything around here. Everything was just went nowhere. I mean, just dumb. I mean, 
He's a truck driver, but he has no Pennsylvania driver's license. Um, family, according to the report, none, no family, but he had a family. Uh, big family, as a matter of fact, brothers, sisters, a lot of nephews, nieces. Just one dark hole after another. And uh, we've never closed the case. It's still open. Um, we got the run around from the uh, coroner. He lied to us. We got that in writing on an email that went back and forth with him and I. Um, police department. Fire department. Different rescue teams. It's just like everybody was told to shut up. And they did. Family don't talk about it. Uh, yeah, just we've been to the grave site, and you know the little league left a little statue there and a ball and all that stuff. And you know there were a, a lot of uh, things you wouldn't normally find at the grave of a drug dealer. You know, um, it's it, it's just a strange case. I mean. What makes it even stranger is that the day that he disappeared, uh, there were sightings in the area of UFOs. And the one sighting was uh, a couple of police officers. So now they were, he was on this, all, he, his thing all took place on one side of the ridge, Northumberland Ridge. And the police officers were on another call on the other side of the ridge, but they, they saw the craft. And then a farmer said that he saw what he thought was somebody being pulled up in a craft above the power lines. And it looked like he just had on his socks and his shorts. Well, everybody poo-pooed that. When you got to the autopsy, what was he in? T-shirt, shorts, and socks. Um, his feet were unremarkable, which is crazy because... I was wearing heavy boots and it hurt my feet just walking across that crap. And he was allegedly to walk one mile. And the only thing that was wrong with his feet were the heels of his socks were dirty. There's no unremarkable, no bruises or anything like that. Um, the people that did the toxicology report, they tried to pass it off as he drank bad booze. Well, the guy didn't drink, he didn't smoke. So it's just one of those cases where whatever happened and whoever made everybody shut up, there was a reason. So, and there have been a number of sightings in that area um, over the years. But we'll keep at it. We keep we keep getting into it. So, but that's the story of Todd Cease. Strange from day one. Why keep, Why going, keep at going at it? Why keep beating... Why keep beating this case well the um one thing it did turn up which is why we're looking for the son we want to talk to the son who just went missing period was the fact that the police um had a report of the son and the father having a spat where the police were called the day he disappeared uh the only other thing in his stomach uh, was uh, Mountain Dew. This guy always walked around with a can of Mountain Dew. <clears throat> now, was the amount of cocaine put into the can of Mountain Dew? Possible. Who did it? Mountain Dew came from the house. Police were at the house where him and the kid were having a knockdown drag out. So we want to talk to the kid. And that's the proper way to do it. Very true. Very true. Has any family member uh, reached out to you? Uh, in the very beginning, uh, yeah. Uh, a niece. Um, she um, sent me an email, a very nasty email, saying, you know, I was professing that this guy was kidnapped by aliens and all this stuff. And I'm going like, I don't know who you're talking to, lady, but I didn't say that. And uh, she said, well, that's 
what people are saying. I said, well, they didn't get it from me. I said, I haven't talked to anybody about this case at all. And then, you know, I said, I just want the truth. What happened to him? Did somebody kill him? And where he was found, and this is no joke, I was there. At any time during the day or night, because this mountain, this this ridge is noted for Snake City. I mean, that's where they go have these rodeos, snake rodeos. Firing a shot from any type of gun in that on that ridge would not even get anybody to blink an eye. Uh, you can walk up there and shoot 10 people and walk back to your car and nobody's paying any attention. I mean, it, it's very remote. I mean, it is remote. So, you know, I kind of ruled out you know, uh, uh, that type of murder where it like would have been bludgeoned or shot or stabbed or something like that. But when it came back, when the toxicology came back as this massive amount of cocaine and every, every pathologist I talked to said the same thing. This guy wouldn't have walked 10 feet and fell over dead. One guy said five foot, maybe. But how did he get from there? If that was the case that he would have dropped right on the spot. How did he get from there to his property, which is a mile away from where the ATV was and he was, over that rocky terrain, not have any damage to his feet, soles of his feet, nothing, in his socks, underwear, his uh, cover, um, camouflage coveralls that he went out on, they found those, and the family went out because uh, they were looking for the keys for the ATV to bring that back to the house. And um, I guess that's why the police don't talk to us. Um, the family said they went through every pocket. They couldn't find the keys. But they turned in the coveralls to the police. Said, oh, you know, we found these. We were looking for the keys. We didn't find the keys. So here, you want these? And they said, yeah. Well, the next day during the autopsy, the police called and said they found cocaine in the pocket of the coveralls. And the family said, no. There was no, and as a matter of fact, that was the girl called me. She said there was no cocaine in that those coveralls. She said we all went through those pockets. There's only four pockets. She had two breast pockets and two side pockets, and she said they were empty. There was nothing in there. And I went like, mm, okay, you know. So the police lied. What do you think the cover up is? I don't know. I don't know. We could find no connection. Uh, with any drug cartel, no government agencies. I mean, it's, it's what should have been absolutely easy to find wasn't there. I mean, it just wasn't there. The information on this guy, like, he didn't exist. So, who knows? Probably never know, but we still want to talk to the kid. And uh, it was funny that think one thing that struck me is the kid is the one who finds the ATV. The kid is also the one that finds the body. Coincidence? Hmm, possibly. Still worth asking the questions. Oh, yeah. Have to be. Mm-hmm. Have to be. Butch, let's move on here to a couple more questions. From sure. our audience, Jeff wants to know, do you ever collaborate with Stan Gordon? Yeah, I have over the years, yeah. Different cases. Stan the man. Do you have one that kind of stands out? Eh, not really. They're mostly UFO sightings. A uh, uh, couple Bigfoot things. Mostly just swapping information, is, I guess the best way to put it. I guess that's a good part of having friends and working together, is you can do that. Yeah. All right, let's move on here. Tony is asking, Butch, what's the weirdest dogman story that comes to mind? Uh, probably the very first one we had, which was a guy walking his dogs, and the same place he's walked all his, his dogs since he retired. He was a retired combat uh, Air Force pilot, and a commercial pilot retired and he and the dogs were walking up uh, the same path they walk up every day on a state game land. And uh, the dogs started going nuts, looking to the right, and they started pulling. They were pulling so hard they were digging holes in the dirt. 
And this uh, bipedal walked out, paid no attention to them, walked across the trail, walked into the other side. The, the, the dogs were going bananas and and um, it's just like whatever it was, it paid no attention to him or the dogs. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I get two dogs that size. Weimaranas, big dogs. Big. They'd be barking and carrying on wanting to get to my fat butt. I'd be up a tree quick. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Nikki is asking, how many of these human cases are there with humans being cut up while el- alive? Uh, two dozen that I know of. And about six of those are in England. And, and uh, one of those is a family of four. Sovereign wants to know, how do the Sheriff's Department list these UFO laser mutilation cases on their reports killed by mountain lion. <laughs> um, most times, uh, police don't really have an answer. It's usually the owner of the cattle that'll, uh, you know, call a, a vet to come down and look. And a lot of the information we get is from vets. We don't get it from police departments. Hmm. We've got three minutes to go here, my friend, mm-hmm. before we have to say goodnight to you. You know, as we move uh, closer to Halloween, the veil gets thinner. What are you going to be up to? Me? Uh, probably just working on reports. Probably it. I don't get too involved in Halloween. Never did. Even as a kid, never bought, never, never excited me. To dress up like something and go out and get clubbed in the head by your sister for the candy. And here I thought you'd be dressing up like Dr. Evil. No. Uh, that new uh, picture that went up on your site tonight with you and I. That's trippy. Very trippy. Good thanks, uh, Fedora John, for that. I will. And his art skills. You know, tell everybody, take some time where they can uh, figure out how to get a hold of you and what you look for in reports. Um, I, I, all the information they can gather. I mean, no matter how inconsequential it may seem or silly, I want to hear it. Um, they can, the best way to get me, the very best way is to get, get on Facebook under UFO Research Center Pennsylvania or your four cop or just me, Butch Wachowski. And uh, just go over to notifications or, you know, whatever, and ask for my, uh, either my email address if you wanted or my phone number, and I get back to everybody right away. Within within 24 hours, I'm back on the phone with somebody. Nice. That's, that's the fastest way. Nice. And you don't turn down any reports? No, none. And not only reports, but if anybody just wants information on how to do something or a piece of equipment they want to get or or how to do something, or, you know, how to make a plaster cast, or take fingerprints, or whatever, I'll give them the information. Very cool. Are you hoping to get out here anytime soon? Uh, We'll be going out uh, in two weeks. Where are you heading? Uh, North Central Pennsylvania to check out three caves. Caves. Dangerous. Mm -hmm. Hmm. You can't run that fast anymore. No, I always get somebody slower than me to tag along. Good. Well, Put him at the end. It's not going to be Lon Strickler anymore. He's back in love. Whoa, really? Yeah. I don't know. What do you mean? On his Facebook page, he's got a new girlfriend. Oh, yeah? Apparently so. Cool. Mm-hmm. Anybody I know? I <laughs> have no idea. But, oh. but apparently romance is in the air. Cool. That's Chateau Strickler. Couldn't happen to a nicer guy. Very true. After he tragically lost his wife a few years ago to cancer, I believe. Yes. Yeah, that was sad. It's good for him. Good for him. And Butch, uh, big thank you to you coming back on Spaced Out Radio again. We will talk to you next month, my friend. Absolutely. I look forward to it. I know our audience does well. Butch Wachowski, UFOcop.com. Coming up next, we have the unbiased UFO report with Fedora wearing John Hudson. We got Shirky Poo's Newswire, the thought of the day. 
Stay tuned. Spaced Out Radio continues right after this. Great show again, buddy. Okie dokie. Well, we'll talk to you later. Yeah, you go get some sleep. You need bail money, give me a call. Always, Dad. Take care. See ya. Love me some Butch Wachowski. Love me some Butch Wachowski. Brian, what's happening? There you go, Fabster. Alicia saying, I'm glad somebody is finding love in the air. Fap, you know what you got to do. You got to go to Texas. See this handsome young lady. Careful, Alicia. Fap's got moves. Fabster has big time moves. <sighs> I apologize for the yawning, everyone. Hey, there he is, Fedora John. Flick that Stop hair button. flick that hair for us if you don't mind. Give it a little shake for us. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. For as long as I have it, you know. I like it. it. It's it's actually it drives me nuts sometimes because my my daughter got my hair and, she, and it's 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 as thick as mine used to be. I mean, I just have a ponytail like this thick, and boy, is it sad how it thins as you get older. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't have that problem. Yeah, we won't talk about that because you know I still like you, and I'd like to keep yeah. it that way. Well, here, let me just look at that, buddy. Yeah, no male yeah, pattern I know. baldness I know. whatsoever. I know. Wrong, 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 wrong. <sighs> I'm so tired. I'm taking a vacation week uh, uh, after next week. Not Good. on the show. I'll still do the show, but during the, the week, I'm going to take a vacation week and... I'm going to sleep. Yep. My recommendation, honestly, with everything going on, is you spend most of the week sleeping, meditating, and hanging out with your kid. Yeah, well, he'll be at school. Yeah, so you meditate while he's in school, sleep in, meditate while he's in school, and then when he gets out, you got lots of energy to play with him, and, and just, you uh-huh. know, just, just, fo- just follow your fancy for a week, you know? Yeah. We'll figure something out. Oh, man. Guillermo, what's going on, buddy? Gorgeous. Jennifer P., what's happening? Yeah, it'll be good to get some rest. That's for sure. I feel like I could sleep for two weeks man i might take two weeks i don't know just be i find it interesting is that whenever you have two things going on like you do you know and one of them is really wearing on you and even though that's wearing your whole life down the other one energizes you and (sighs) it really shows you that like it's really about how much you love something that really impacts how much weight it brings on you oh for sure dude for sure it's exactly it but every now and again, like I, I can honestly feel my body telling me to take some time off. I've and it's rare that I've had that. Rare. Well, it's good that you. It's good that you actually are, are of, of sound mind enough to actually be able to hear it when it tells you that. Because a lot of times it's right when your body tells you that that your mind's so wound up that people don't hear it. You know. Yeah. Well, we'll figure it out. We'll get her sorted out. Go hang out with Carl. Fuck, I wish. 
get him to do his alien woo crap on my chest. Hey, you, you, you get enough sleep and you meditate and you, you stay mindful and you never know. Never know. Fap, does anybody believe Dave just doesn't hang out shirtless by a lake every day until 9 p.m. Pacific? I'll never tell. <laughs> Thank you to Space Cow, Brutus, Alicia, Jason, Fabster, Blue Book, Dirt Road Times 2, Mennonite, Abe, Tim, Smithy, and Black Dragon for the amazing Super Chats. And uh, it's a great way to support what we do on this show nightly. And uh, we're going to fire it up here with Stetch and John here momentarily. Get your horns up. Here we go. We've rounded third. We're heading for home tonight on Spaced Out Radio. My name is Dave Scott. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. We really do appreciate earning your listening ears. Want to remind you that I have, uh, you know, been told to remind you that you can check out all of our free archives by going to youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Do old Davey the favor. Hit that subscribe button. Our website is spacedoutradio.com, where we have a plethora of features for you, including rocking out to Bumblefoot and reading up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire. Follow us on Twitter, at Spaced Out Radio, and on Instagram, Spaced Out Radio Show. It's time once again for Fedora Wearing John Hudson and the UFO Report. Yeah, it's that time once again where John comes in and talks about all the hot news around the UFO world. And we are going to kick things off with a little bit of news from France and the French intelligence agency looking into some UFOs. John, take it away. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for hanging out to listen. It's nice to be here. And, uh, yeah, this is actually this is a pretty cool one. Now, this is a little hard to get into um, because it, you know, it is all in French. If you go to the actual, um, if you go to the actual interview, um, but there've been a couple of people have been kind enough to translate some of it. And, uh, essentially it's, it, this gentleman, um, named, uh, and I'm going to badly pronunciate the poor gentleman's name, but Alain, uh, uh Juliet, uh, I believe, um, it, essentially Juliet. he was a, say again? Alain Juliet. Oh, Elaine uh, uh, Juliet, really? Right. Well, uh, see, that's what happens when you have, uh, you know, a Quebec in your country, right? You get to actually learn French pronunciations. Um, so, um, uh, but basically, this guy was was actually the the head of the DGSSE, uh, which is the French Intelligence Service. I, I assume that's equivalent to uh, a CIA or an MI6 as a, a, a being an out, out an exterior facing, but it's hard to tell because I remember you telling me that that Canada has one unit that does both. Um, and, um, essentially, you know, he, what was cool about it is that he said a lot of the same things that we've all been saying. Um, he talked about the possibilities of two parallel worlds, um, you know, that might explain some of the phenomenon. He talks about the fact that, um, you know, in some places, uh, the phenomenon goes, um, quite unnoticed. Um, he talks about the fact that it, you know, it is more or less classified. I mean, he says a lot of the same things that, that, that we've all been hearing, but to hear it coming out of someone from his position in his native tongue, speaking to his own people shows to me that there is a, a common thread that's happening in, in all of our countries. And, and I think that's a good thing. I think that shows that we're making progress. So is this guy pretty much the equivalent of Lou Elizondo over there? Uh, no, actually, I would say he's more equivalent of like a Brennan. Um, you know, I mean, we're, you know, th- we're talking about the, the head of that, the head of that organization. So this is a, this is a very senior level position. Um, and, and you know, I would say, I would argue from what I now know about Lou, that Lou was probably about as senior as you can get without having a public face. Um, I, and I think this guy was in a position where he was 
you know, she was basically heading the whole organization. So this is this is more like a more like a Brennan or 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 a DNI sort of role. So this is this is a big deal. This is a really big deal. But um, but it's like I said, it wasn't that he said anything particularly shocking. It was that he said a lot of the same things. And, you know, I mean, for him to be talking about, you know, parallel dimensions and so forth. You, I mean, you know, that's not normal terminology to be using. And so for him to be saying things like that really shows that there there really is a common a common theme that's happening. No, that is really cool. I mean, it, you know, and it just corresponds what we're hearing from not only the United States, Canada, and other countries as well. So the more countries we get on with government officials now not being afraid to talk about this subject so much, I think this is, you know, that's just another another little uh, centimeter or in the door mm-hmm. that opens up a little bit more. And I think that's absolutely great. All right, let's move on to topic number two, which was Kevin Day was on a podcast recently, kind of going over what's happening with uh, UAP Expedition X. Uh, no, actually, that's not what I have, sir. Or Andrew Nock, pardon me. Yes, I, I apologize. No, no worries, no worries. You're sleepy. I'm, I'm with you. Yeah, so basically, Andrew Nock, he is the um, the producer of Demi Lovato's um, program. And uh, and so he, he's been the one that had actually been kind of running the show for, for her TV show. And so uh, he was interviewed and basically um, by, by Christina Gomez. And essentially it was he, he actually gave away some interesting details that, um, you know, I, I can't speak for all of you listening. But for me, it, it actually uh, it personally made me a little more interested in checking out her show. Um, in that he did talk about the fact that she uh, made an effort to go out and reach out to uh, experts that were, were willing to, to talk to her, uh, you know, on film. Um, it was essentially um, her and um, a, 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 a dear friend and a sibling that were kind of on this adventure. And they did talk to Kevin Day. They did talk to Nick Pope. Um, but she also did some other interesting things in that essentially at one part during the series, she takes a remote viewing class. Um, and you get to see some of the results of that. And at another place in this program, she actually goes through hypnotic regression. And this is evidently shown in quite detail. And, you know, hypnotic regression is not only, um, you know, a very uh, personal thing when it's done properly, but considering how often it's done improperly, um, it's a very controversial thing for anyone to be doing, especially someone at her, at, you know, at her level. And, uh, and she also evidently made a trip to Catalina Island. Um, which, uh, you know, no, no doubt was at the advice of, of uh, Kevin Day and some others. But um, so she did actually try to, to try to hit some interesting points in this whole phenomenon world. Um, and according to this producer, um, during one of their uh, night sightings, they did capture something that, that they believe might have actually been a UFO. And that will actually be shown in the, sh- in, in the show. So, it'll, you know, I mean, I have no idea how much he was talking it up. But um, if you listen to the interview, he was pretty, he, you know, I got to admit, this guy, he kind of impressed me a little bit. Um, you know, he he pushed back on a lot of things. He tried not to be grandiose. He tried to minimize claims and he tried to play it pretty straight. And, you know, I, I got to say, like, uh, I was a little surprised by his demeanor. You know, outside of this, I mean, it all comes down to Demi Lovato and, you know, when you get people like her or Rob Lowe or uh, or Jack Osborne who are using their celebrity clout to all of a sudden step into research that they never have stepped into, you know, it just to me rubs me the wrong way. Granted, they're getting the subject airtime. Granted, they're doing something different, you know, but... I well, just... so let me give you let me give you a counterpoint, okay? Please. Um, a while ago, uh, George Knapp interviewed um, um, uh, Pamela Anderson. You know, uh, of of, yes. uh, of of you know, very interesting fame um, about her paranormal work, and um, and I gotta say, um, I was I was kind of shocked. Um, that woman has done a lot of research and a lot of field research. And I don't know if she's been following any methodologies. I don't know if she's been documenting any of it. I don't know how thorough she was. But, I mean, she had some stories. And uh, and the thing is, is that when you look at the world, uh, 
the people that are touched by by this phenomenon um it's it's statistically going to appear all over the place and as a result of that we should get just as many doctors lawyers singers guitarists drummers senators congressmen prime ministers i mean basically the, this should appear in every in every part of society and we really want people from those groups stepping up and talking about their experiences because it makes everyone else more comfortable to do so and some of these people could actually turn into decent researchers we don't know that's being very politically correct you know well it's honestly how i feel well i no, and i and i can see that and i can appreciate that and i'm not yeah, maybe I am trying to stir it up a little bit here, okay? Maybe I am just to just to play devil's advocate. But you know, it would be nice if these hosts, if these celebrity hosts actually brought real researchers with them, okay, as part of their team. That's what I'm saying. You know, I mean, look, there are so many times these celebrities come out and they completely, what's the word I'm looking for? Ignore the community that they are researching in. They come in, they use their influence and their power to come in and say, well, I'm a UFO researcher now, or I'm a Bigfoot researcher, or I'm a ghost hunter. And they completely ignore the community We've seen it numerous times over the decades since this type of television has become very popular and ratings worthy. You know, and for some of them, they're just trying to get another 15 minutes of fame in front of the camera as their acting career has died down or winding down or whatever it may be. Now, I'm not saying they don't have an interest in it, John. Everyone can have an interest in this subject. It's a fun subject to have interest in and to be a part of. But I just don't like the fact that that you, you never see, you know, like if Rob Lowe was going out looking for Sasquatch, you never saw him walking around with Jeff Meldrum. You never saw him, you know, as part of his investigative team. It was him and his sons. So so I, I would argue that on the cryptid side, I, I think it's, I think it's an easier, I think it's a slightly easier solved problem. But I would say on, on, the, on the UFO side and so forth, considering what's going on right now, uh, can you think of one, uh, of, of one researcher that, that Demi Lovato could have picked to take with her that, that everyone or even the majority of people would have agreed was a good person to take? Well, it's a very I mean, small number of people. And then from that group, are they actually presentable? Tim McMillan. Are they actually TV safe? Tim McMillan. There's one. Granted, he's in Germany. Probably wouldn't want to come. Ross Ross Coltart. Two. I'm sorry, I agree with both of those, but those are both very new folks. Richard Dolan. I don't know. I like personally. I, I I tend to like Richard's work, but I have to admit, like there is a there is a, a growing contingency of people that 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 have doubts in Richard and would not appreciate him being involved. Well, that's fine and dandy, but he's also still one of the faces of the franchise. Agreed, agreed. But my point is, is that it might be very hard for them to pick someone that isn't going to ruffle feathers. True, true. Well, everyone is going to. That's that's the funny part about it. All right, let's move on here to the next one. Sammy Hagar, we touched on this on the round table. Sammy Hagar finally admits again that he has aliens. More of a lifetime of strange encounters. What do you got for us? So this was, first off, I really encourage everyone to go listen to the interview. Uh, it, it's on Mystery Wire. It's actually, it's an interesting interview. It's not very long. 
Um, and, you know, and in the past, Sammy Hagar has not been tremendously secretive about his the fact that he's had encounters. But in this interview, he really kind of laid it out. And he basically kind of explained that this was something that's been happening to him since he was very young, that he's had many different experiences, that it influenced his music, um, and that he basically, you know, didn't like to talk about it because he didn't want people to think he was crazy, which, you know, I... I I had to admit, I, I found a little bit entertaining for, for someone, you know, it, it, that's had his role to have, be worried about people thinking he's crazy. But it just shows that that stigma does affect everyone. And it shows that because of what's happening now in the world, he's feeling safer to come out and talk about it. And you never know, there, there might be two or three other people that, you know, uh, are in a similar sort of role that, that look at him and go, well, God, man, if Sammy Hagar can get away with it, so can I. And you never know. And so, but it's a good interview and it's worth listening to. It, it was, it was actually really interesting. And I applaud, um, I applaud George Knapp and his team for actually getting this interview because um, it was, it was definitely a, um, a UFO focused conversation. Yeah. I, I think it's great. I wish more stars. I, I mean, here I am totally contradicting myself. No Demi Lovato or Rob Lowe, but Sammy Hagar, rock and roll. Let's get some more names out. You know, I don't mind if the stars come out and say they're experiencers. I think that's positive. Okay? The difference is, so people, because people always need clarifying these days, the difference is when you are using this newfound topic of yours as a, as a scapegoat to make money at a television series to get your name in the forefront, that's where I have an issue. But I could definitely see someone who is in a in a talent role managing one of these folks for them to come and say, hey, I want to go share my experience. And they go, "Uh, uh-uh. you're not going to take risk unless there's some reward. And if you want to go out and talk about this, we have to build something around it. And I could see that happening. Me, too. Finally, tonight. And we only got about, you know what, let's let's save this one. The yeah. anti-gravity club. Yep, yep. All right, let's save that one for when you're on in a couple nights' time because we are running out of time here. But, uh, John, incredible uh, UFO report as per usual. And where can people find you, John? Uh, primarily right now on Twitter. Uh, you can actually search for my name or you can search for underscore Desmodin. And uh, I post notes to the show as well as some of the other research I do on my own. All right, buddy. Appreciate you. And we're going to get to Shirky Poo's news. Have a good evening. News is always changing, which is why we bring you the SOR Newswire. Starting off in Ohio, where an actor at a haunted house in Ohio who was carrying a real Bowie-style knife as a prop accidentally stabbed an 11-year-old boy. The incident was reported just after 8 p.m. back on September 18th at the Seven Floors of Hell haunted house. Yep, the boy and his family friend were approached outside the haunted house by one of the roaming actors looking to scare them. The actor, a 22-year-old man from Middleburg Heights, Ohio, was carrying a large fixed blade knife as a prop. The haunted house actor scraped the knife on the ground in front of them and began to stab at the ground near the boy's feet, the police report states. The knife went through the boy's red croc-style shoes and cut his left toe. The photo... Uh, is uh, the, the police report showed of the bloody cut. Uh, staff at the attraction applied first aid, and the boy's mother was called. Police asked if she would like to take her son to the hospital, but the boy wanted to continue going through the attraction. The report said, good for him. Tough Ohio boy there. Further medical attention was declined, and the group finished the tour of the haunted house. The knife was confiscated from the actor, who told police that he 
he brought it from home and used it instead of using the provided prop knives from the haunted houses, according to the report. He also admitted to using the knife was not a good idea and the injury was an accident and he had no intention of hurting anyone with it. The boy's mother later decided to pursue negligent assault charges. Of course she did, because she wants to cash in here on a snafu like this. The seven floors of Hell Haunted House, which is located about 15 miles southwest of Cleveland, did not immediately respond to media requests. With October around the corner, that spooky time of year is nearly upon us, but one California man had a real-life fright that had nothing to do with Halloween. Joel Morrison was walking through a cemetery when he passed by a 100-year-old grave. Nothing too strange about it. Many graveyards have been around for well over a century, except this plot had human hair peeking out of it. Yeah, the video was shared on Tic Tac. In it, you hear Joel saying how he was just seeing something really gross. The camera then shows the tomb and pans down to a clump of hair that is flowing out of the crack of the grave. Now, Joel says that he is... Uh, when his disgust subsided, he started to feel bad for the deceased family members and worried about the upkeep of the cemetery, feeling kind of like maybe they were being disrespected or desecrated in some way. He noted other grave sites had been damaged by animals and overgrowing trees. Commenters were also disturbed by what they saw, with one calling it the scariest thing I've seen. Others have a guess as to what they thought was happening. Seems like they're buried under a tree, a funeral director once suggested not to be buried near trees, as something like this may happen. Continuing on here, finally tonight. All right, the first all-private mission to space was interrupted by an alarm linked to Crew Dragon's Poo Center. Yeah, the waste management system on the rocket requiring a composed response from all four space tours, otherwise they wouldn't be able to do their doo-doo. Nature calls, whether you're at home or in orbit, there's a microgravity-optimized toilet aboard the SpaceX Crew Dragon. It triggered an alarm during recent Inspiration4 mission, causing moments of stress because they didn't know what they were going to do. Well, the four crew team members figured it out, fixed it up. They can now poop in peace. <laughs> Poop in peace. I have potty humor. What can I say? Today's thought of the day. What's the weirdest thing you've encountered paranormally? Penman. I wouldn't know where to begin. I've seen lots of weird stuff. Maribeth, Stanley Hotel in Colorado. It looked like someone was walking outside our bedroom window. It was completely dark in the room, and you could only see light from outside through a crack in the drapes. Greg, seeing a co-worker go into a sandwich shop who had recently died. Another co-worker was with me, and we both saw her. Chad, being scratched at Brushy Mountain Prison while filming an upcoming documentary. Jeannie, I I saw what looks like a transparent amoeba floating across the hall during the day. Thank you to everybody in the thought of the day. Thank you to Shirky Poo for the news. John for the UFO report. And Butch Witkowski for strange days. We got Mr. Ron Bumblefoot Thaw rocking in the background with Little Brother is watching. Bumblefoot is the official music of Spaced Out Radio. Rocking us in and out of every single show. Get your horns up for the guitar god himself. Special thanks to everybody listening in at home, at work, in your cars, wherever you may be. Thank you to everyone in our chat rooms tonight. YouTube, Twitch, LGAP, Spreaker, Revolution Radio, Facebook, the Space Travelers Club, and on Twitter at hashtag Spaced Out Radio. Remember this show is copyright by Space Down Radio and SOR Media Ventures Limited. Thank you so much for choosing to share your evening with us, because together, my friends, say it with me, we own the night. Mr. Bumblefoot, we need a favor. We need you to take us home. Yes, the Wu Train has docked for the night. But soon, my friends, we shall ride again. 
Your seats are always available. Your tickets never expire. And if you want to bring a friend, we've got room for them too. Good night.